Yep. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. And if anybody hasn't signed in, just make sure you sign in. Um, it, if you do want to speak at some point tonight, just make sure that um, that you present your name. Um, a lot of times we know who you are, but just for the note taker, as well as individuals that might be watching. Um, so just make sure you state your name. Um, so first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any amendments or are we good to approve as written? I think we're good. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. All right. So the um, first, we have two appointments tonight. The first appointment we have is with Windsor County Sheriff. Uh, we do have 45 minutes uh, appointment. And as you can see, the, the agenda is pretty busy this evening. So what I want to do is, um, is kind of break it into thirds. So the first third would be just um, for individuals that are in person or or on Zoom, is to kind of recap, kind of what are some of the what are some of our concerns that we have when it comes to our current policing. I know we went through it more at the last meeting. With you know, at this point, we're trying to we're we're basically saying that the constable end of things is not really working for us. But what what are those um, what are those macro level issues that we're having in our community right now? like example, speed, something like that. Um, so at least we can get those out in the open. Uh, these are the concerns we have. And then I, what I'd like to do after we do that is just turn that over to Ryan so that he can talk through kind of what the Windsor County Sheriff's Department can or may, maybe may not be able to do for us based upon our concerns. And then the last third, whatever time we have left, then I'll turn it open to a uh, longer comment if anybody uh, wants to go on the record with any of the discussion. So, um, so just kind of the, the, the go through, um, uh, I'll start in person and then we can go uh, to zoom, you know, what, what are some of the, I just want to be, I want to ask a couple contract questions before we end this session. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. right. Yeah. Just for a minute. Mm -hmm. So, so what are, I know we've already gone over this at the last meeting. What are, what are some of the, the high level concerns that we have um, with our current uh, model that we have or, or issues in town? I think it's speed on Campbell. Oh, speeding. yeah. Yep. It's terrible up there. Speeding. When they come off that mountain, it looks like they're doing 60, 65 past our house sometimes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they are. We've been doing road construction up there after the flood. Obviously, the sheriff himself had uh, was had to go through there recently, and, um, and people are going crazy. That's why when we put out today that we we're going to extend the road closure, up there because of the construction is going to take longer. So many pe residents, people who live on the road are so happy because it, because you don't, it's just safe. So Camp Brook speeding is a big one. So speeding, and I know we have other areas throughout the town that, you know, we have issues, um, not just Camp Brook, but there, there are other issues that, that come up at times uh, other than speeding. Jordan uh, Guerra and I'm gonna. I think last time we we classified it kind of like Bethel's kind of turned into the wild west for the criminal aspect because there's no one to hold them accountable, so it's everything. I mean, they're on the side of the road shooting up, using, dealing, you know, stealing. It, there's nobody stopping it, and as they figure out that no one's stopping it, it's getting a lot worse and really quick. Yeah, so accountability, obviously we've had um, the issues with drugs uh, using and dealing. We've also had issues with some, um, um, well, a lot recently of theft. Of certain parts of it was certain couple of individuals, but in random, you know, we do have um, uh, an uptick in theft and and then, and then we have some vandalism that's that that comes and goes. Yeah, um, that we were on the receiving end, the town. I mean, as you can see, someone hit the, took out our sign and Oscar did get that person. But so that's a $10,000, you know, seven to $10,000 to fix the sign. It was right here on the town hall. And then where somebody vandalized the skate park and, you know, so. We had someone break into the town garage there oh, in the yeah. spring. Yep. Um, you know, we've had a rash of break-ins uh, 
high speed yeah. pursuits. I mean, yeah. you name it. You name it. it so Jordan's <laughs> right. State police who are too busy and kind of get to it whenever they can, and yep. and they're not really getting to it. No, uh, true. And I think somebody had said at the last meeting, um, just kind of that that hometown touch of that person. Uh, we're looking Becky, for maybe, maybe it was you at the last meeting, but somebody kind of like, you know, not not to pick on the Vermont State Police, but when we have an issue with the Vermont State Police, we just feel like there's not that personal touch um, so that when it reoccurs, it become, you know, instead of picking up the phone and saying, oh, you know, you know that person one on one, instead it becomes somebody new that you're talking to or they don't know the case or. Oh, there uh, we go. Yeah. Right. And I think it'd be nice to have somebody that we all know as a community instead of a random person, another random person, another random person, and yeah, you know, trying to learn 10 different people instead of having a community figure that is here to help and kind of build with us. Like a couple of regulars, so yeah. everybody gets to know them. Yeah, and a presence. A presence, I absolutely, yeah. there's no doubt Just about it. Just We want a Andy Griffith. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. So, so uh, Andy Griffith didn't have it, we have to deal with that. <laughs> um, Becky Bass, and yeah, I mean, I think, Cover at least a good chunk of it. I would just, I look at the experience that I've had to as examples mm -hmm. because I like concrete examples. And I would absolutely agree. You call the state police, they either never show up. If you call it, you never get the same person twice. Um, and it's at least on our hill, we have a lot of sketchy stuff going on. But the stuff that I, I've given up mm -hmm. on getting the drug dealers off our damn hill at this point. I would love for something to be done. But it's also when it, they're encroaching on my property or damaging my property or trespassing despite our keep out signs and we call and nobody shows up, nothing ever happens. Mm -hmm. Recently, I finally got something done because I personally chased down the game warden in Randolph and because it was the game warden and not the state police and I was emailing with her and it was the same person and something got done yeah but you know i mean it was a very minor trespassing and she issued tickets and but something was done yeah since the last meeting i did meet with lieutenant gordon from the state police the yeah. commander very nice man and he is saying the same thing that the commanders before him said which is they are stretched they yeah. have you know people working double shifts they're getting people you know from different barracks and they really need local towns to contract with, you know, sheriff departments or start police farms. They really need us to step up ourselves because they just don't have the bandwidth. And and I, I will say this, he made a, a really good point, I felt, which is something that Chris Jarvis had said at one of our meetings, like the last one, saying some of it is, has to do with people needing to write to their legislators because police officers can arrest somebody over and over again. And you could give them a name and they could come in with a rap sheet to show you how many times they have been arrested. And so that's definitely a legislative issue. And you do have um, Senator Dick McCormick, you have Representative Kirk White. So you do have people locally that you could write to um, about your concerns because they're the ones who write the laws that make the policing you know, more effective, certainly, and give them, the police, the tools that they need um, to do what the police need to do. So so let me um, go. Is there anybody online that would like to comment on any of the potential topics of concern that we have in our community? If you do, either just raise your hand or you can put the hand emoji thing up and we'll grab you. Dave. Has his hand up kind of in the shadow. Sometimes I don't remember, and this question might be uh, in the next phase, but um, is Windsor County uh, going to be able to, if, 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 if the state police can't get help, uh, Central, uh, Central Market can't get help, nobody can get help. So when you need a, a more um, trained person, if we if we want to contract with Windsor County, do they feel that they can get help? They can get the qualified people if if there's a opening. Yeah, well, yeah, that'll definitely like you were saying, Dave. That'll definitely be on 
on the I'm sheriff's sorry, but, I, but I think of something I have to say. Sure. Yep. So I think it sounds like uh, Lenny. You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I've been MIA for a little bit. I was away for a while. Um, mm -hmm. The question, is it the number, is it the, the manpower or is it the hours? Like, what do we need to improve? I mean, if it's 20 hours enough or is it a combination of more manpower, more hours? I mean, because there's a lot to patrol here. There's not just, you know, like Camp Brook. There's, you know, it's spread out. So what's the, what are we working on to fulfill that? Yeah, we, at the last meeting, Lenny, um, and, and maybe I can get you caught up to speed here at some point. Um, you know, we, I, I guess what we basically as a community at the last one decided that the 20 hours of policing that we set aside in the budget for the constables to do isn't being done, right? Um, they they are busy doing their full-time jobs, don't have the time to help right. us. Um, and, and and probably just about all these issues, well, a majority of these issues are probably as a result of just not having a presence, right? Um, and, and then what we started to talk about, Lenny, was kind of, you know, where do we go from here? So it sounds like the constable end of things that had worked for us for so long isn't. Um, so what are our new options? And we and we basically boiled it down to the sheriff's department, and then the sheriff's department has different levels of care that they can offer us. So, you know, uh, one level would be just doing, uh, you know, fulfilling those hours that we currently have budgeted, uh, and then we can go up the ladder on more towards what we'll call a full time um, type uh, policing um, that they could offer us. So, and, that, and I think that's kind of what we're talking about today is you know what are the what are the issues that we have in town and let ryan um have an opportunity to speak on behalf of the sheriff's department to say he you know we hear you and here here are the things that we can do and maybe some of the things that they can't do mm -hmm. and and then maybe what his recommendation would be and then we have kind of behind the scenes have talked to ryan and his department on some of mm -hmm. the different levels of care that we can do um you know where do we start you know type deal so um, so uh, unless anybody has anything else to add, Jesse, let's, let's oh, Jesse? muted. Yep. There you go. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to add to the list of things I've kind of seen or heard about going around town. And one of them is, is just like domestic violence, um, interpersonal, uh, violence in the home, that kind of thing that I know people, um, I see on the, the police blog a lot. I know that happens around here. And then also just um, mental health crises, people calling that need wellness checks um, on a loved one or a friend, family member, that kind of thing. Okay, thanks, Jesse. All right, anything else online or anything that we might've missed? Joe just came in. We'll get you caught up to speed, Joe. I think to me about the last meeting too, is that no matter what we do, we're not believing that we're gonna 100% solve all the crime end up. It's right. not happens, but doing something is far better than letting right. us just spiral out of control. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I would add to it. I think that it would behoove whoever comes into this community to speak with the people who are here because we know who the problems are in our neighborhoods. I think when we highlighted this I know Christian Hill has certain people that are not helping we certainly know over Gage Road has become notorious where we live mm -hmm. um both at the top and the bottom and we know where you should be looking we know that you drag them in and they let them right out again but you don't by no means do you have to look into the ether to find information on what's going on. There's definitely people here who are happy to have conversations about what is going on in our neighborhoods because Bethel is a community of lots of little different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Like Camp Brook is another perfect example. Sure. And each one is has a little bit of a different situation going on. 
Yeah, so I think we, what we're all looking for is community policing so that you have a couple of officers, two or three, yeah. the same people that are always here, that get to know people, that stop in at Central Market or, you know, the coffee shop, whatever, and kind of get to meet people. And they're going to get to know people by if they're always the same one responding to calls, then they're going to get to know people. So we're all looking for yeah. that community policing feel. And, um, and I also just want to just add, we do... In case Ryan doesn't know, we do have um, a pretty busy bar in town, as well as we do have a newly open or will be open dispensary that's supposed to oh, be starting right, yeah. um, soon. So those will be those are kind of some other things in the community that you know that we do have. So I, I think what I do at this point is just kind of open it up to Ryan, let him kind of talk through the sheriff's department and things, and then at the end, whatever time we have left, I'll feel free. I'll I'll send. Uh, questions or comments again so All right so my first question where do you want me to stand wherever you want right. people can see you they're going to see you on camera the right. camera you can stand up if you feel comfortable here, so kind of and the select board will be curious so. that's good uh so first of all if you don't know me if your social media is not inundated last campaign season one i'd like to know that so i can fix it next time <laughs> <laughs> i'm ryan palmer Recently elected town sheriff, um, took over in February, was elected in November, so we're coming up basically a year, surpassed the year since the election. Uh, Bethel, and I'm just going to go that way. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. I was all excited. I was like, I was going to hold the mic. <laughs> so I ran because I care about rural policing in Vermont. I grew up here. I saw that there's a, a deficiency in how rural policing has gone on, law enforcement, whatever you want to call it, in Vermont, right? All of these complaints that you folks are having is the majority of every town out there is kind of saying the same thing, right? You know, we've got, whether it's a speed issue, whether it's you've got a trap house set up that's causing quality of life issues, whether you you come out, and your car's missing its catalytic converter, whether your house was broken into, whether your car got stolen, <clears throat> you know, you turn on WCAX and all you see is violent crime, the shooting, the stabbing, all these types of things, right? Uh, a lot of that revolves around substance use. You know, we're never gonna be able to police our way out of that, how we police and how we evolve our law enforcement techniques um, will certainly help in that. And when I campaign, I campaign kind of on this three-prong approach, right? We need to work with young kids, kind of keep them from getting into trouble. We need to help those that are in either a mental health crisis or a substance abuse crisis. We need to be not just locking people up, throwing away the key or, or giving them a hard time because they're driving their $500 car to work and you're writing $500 worth of tickets, right? That's not fixing it. Uh, and we also have to be proactive in the way that we police, right? I always... Yeah, it's not super easy to hold somebody accountable, let's say in Vermont, right? But this idea that, well, we lock them up, they let them out, you know, doesn't mean we need to stop doing our job, right? If we're proactive and we let people know that, hey, you're not going to act like that here, um, eventually they either move or they change their behavior, right? They're going to say, I don't want to live here and go somewhere else, or they're going to modify that behavior, hopefully. And we've seen that be effective in other places. So uh, I'm very much a law and order sheriff, but uh, I'm highly focused on community. Stopping in, as you can see, I like to stop in the local bakery or pizza shop and say hi, but being involved, being an integral part of that community, assimilating yourself into the community so that when you have conversation, I think I had a conversation with you two at the school last year, right? And we we're having these same conversations. So being there, opening up to people and saying, hey, how's your day? Or how have you been? And that usually starts the, it, it all comes out, right? Well, actually, so being involved in the community. So that's a little bit of the stump speech. Remember that in 2026? No, I'm kidding. But I just wanted you to, I wanted to kind of introduce myself to you and in, in my philosophy on law enforcement and community, right? So what we've done since I've taken over, We've expanded the department. I started with about 10 or 11 sworn law enforcement. We're up to 23. Um, if I had more work, I could bring more people on. So why that is, I think we're just built, we've built a good culture. I'm kind of a young department head. It's kind of fresh, exciting. We've been lucky. I've been able to 
to kind of um, use some relationships I've had. People want to come over. We're having a lot. Of, <clears throat> we're having a lot of luck in places that we're policing now. We're providing law enforcement service for now with the striking that balance between going out there, being visible, doing things, getting involved, but also knowing when to write a ticket and when not to write a ticket stopping into the stores, interacting with the community, going to the schools. Schools are very important to me, right? Because we need to change that cycle that these kids are in, all right? You see some of these places that they live, they grow up the way they're treated. If we can be somewhat of positive influence in their life um, and kind of push them in the right direction, we're not going to save every kid, but if we can save one out of five or 10 or 20, it's better than not doing anything, right? Um, so being more involved in the community on all sorts of different levels, that's super important to me. Um, on your manpower issue, we have the folks that want to provide law enforcement service in the county. I've got 23 sworn law enforcement officers. Uh, <clears throat> we have the, the bandwidth to soak up, you know, some of those patrol hours. We just instituted a canine program. He is uh, Deputy Howe who's a fairly local, he's from Tunbridge. Uh, he taught in the Sharon schools. He then became a, a police officer along, or, uh, with Orange County. Uh, he's running our, or he's gonna be our canine officer. We hope to have two or three of those in the next, you know, through this first term, I'd like to bring on more canines for a plethora of different reasons, tasers, equipment, all that stuff. So we, we're very comfortable in coming to Bethel and knowing that we can hit the, the, whatever that criteria is, whether if it's 20 hours a week, whether it's 40 hours a week, whatever we work out that makes sense, we're, we're comfortable uh, in being able to provide that service. And then he talked a lot about wanting to know your police officers. We generally work folks in, in, in the same area. I mean, sometimes it just isn't the case, like, hey, somebody new is going to come here, but we're still a small enough agency that uh, you'll know, you'll know the people work in your community. Right. And a big thing for me is being transparent, being open, being easily accessible. My email, my cell number is in my email. I'm not hard to get a hold of. We also will assign a supervisor to kind of be the, the liaison for the day to day. You know, somebody speeding on this place, somebody doing this um, to kind of coordinate law enforcement efforts on the operational and tactical level, if that makes sense. Um, and then, of course, I'll be working on on our level on the more executive side to make sure that we're providing service and so that's a lot of words and a lot of maybe it sound like a lot of fluff but i kind of wanted to just fill you in um in the short answers we can provide service we want to provide service here uh we enjoy service because we've been in two pursuits through your town here uh in the last week or two so um i guess that was a i would say quick but for me it was quick um questions now or I think one thing before we open up questions is we had um well we there was a couple of different levels of 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 policing service. that policing service that you had given us and sure. like the the first one was basically what I would call the basic service which was you know using that 20 hours that we we think that we're getting that we're not getting now just you know mostly on like a patrol basis and can you just kind of go through what those was there three levels three well we could we could well, tell well, you actually, the top level the yeah, half million was a no-go <laughs> and that was just to throw say hey what would 24 yeah, 7 no. coverage look like I for the town here myself we get confused on is when you start talking about um on call what mm -hmm. what that means versus sure. you know vermont state police well we've always been a vermont state police town you know they're right there so if you guys were here, would anything change from that? Um, or what, how would that look like? Or... So my goal coming in was to move the agency from a place that just wrote tickets for in four hour blocks. That's how we provide service. You hired us in four hour blocks. We sat in your town for four hours at a time and basically wrote tickets. That's all they really did. And it was a revenue thing. It kind of worked out for the town. It worked out to, to reimburse the police department. Uh, we shifted away from that. Uh, July 1, we went kind of live with this idea of uh, providing a more fluid schedule that, hey, we were billing you for, you know, in the case of Bethel, for basically 20 hours a week, we would say, hey, it's $65,000 a year. We're going to hit 
18 to 22 hours a week. Uh, and we're going to split that time up and kind of provide what I call omnipresence, right? If everyone knows we're only here for four hours, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, well, the rest of the time's game on, on, right? So setting up patrol districts or regions, however you want to call it, maybe they're in Sharon for an hour or two, they slide up this way, they make a big loop, drop down to Stockbridge, hopefully, you know, bouncing all over so that we have deputies, similar to what state police does, but making sure that we're checking off those boxes for you. Um, and that has been very successful in the towns that we provide service for now, because again, they're seeing us at different times. We only ran a day shift when I took over. Uh, We've just been able to kind of get into working more night shifts. So I al almost always have people on night shift now, uh, sometimes till, you know, 1, 2 a.m. So we're, we're very competitive with state police on that. Um, we're putting multiple people out on patrol so that if there is an issue, you know, let's say there's an issue in Bethel, we'll be able to slide a couple people up and help with that. Um, so my goal is to really turn this into a full service countywide law enforcement agency. And we're, we're, we're pretty close to that now. So with Chris's ask was basically explain the different just options I presented. And it's kind of, you know, is presented as kind of like an a la carte thing, but we're hoping to have people on 12 to 16 hours a day, um, if not later. Um, and that we will take the calls for service if you're contracted with us. Um, that's our goal um, is to take the majority of calls for service. That might sometimes bounce the state police in certain time frames, and, and we'll work with that more to figure out the nuance of that and what the town can afford. But in that 20 hour a week, kind of what you're doing now, we propose that it cost the town about $65,000. 30. Oh. Because the calls for service. That I think is a catch phrase that kind of gets people goofed up. So when I, when calls for service are calls that you receive when you're not here, mm -hmm. but those are not included in the 65,000, right? Those would be billed at an hourly rate. Um, I think it would kind of come out of your, the, the goals it would come out of your um, 20, 20 hours. Yeah. Okay. And we have people, you know, my goal is to have people are on patrol in the Northern region. I wanted to break it up in three or four, but we're kind of in Northern Southern region right now. Um, so he's in Sharon call, you know, how long it takes, but, um, the goal is it kind of works itself into your patrol hours. But am I correct that calls for service are calls you're answering when you're not actually here? Is that what you mean by calls for service? Whether we're here or we're not oh, Okay. Here, All right. I just right. So if we're sure. here, we're obviously taking the call. Um, yeah. but my deputies are going to be in a okay. patrol zone and, All right. um, Adding these extra hours helps us. Everyone kind of pulls it together and it comes out in the wash is kind of okay. the way we've seen it. All right. Thank so you. So when I say call for service, you call up and the police respond. So earlier, it's ideally, I mean, the way I've kind of been running it, we've, we've been probably over providing service. We're also, um, we use, we have governor's highway safety grants um, we're at like two hundred thousand dollars for the coming year. Uh, that we're that the federal slash state government pays us to to run traffic to to go out and stop cars. So Bethel would get a pretty good chunk of that. I'm not. I mean, I don't want to make any promises of exactly, but um, radio service seems to work well here. It's busy. Our guys would probably like that. So it's kind of we're supplementing um, that coverage as well. So we always have folks out. Um, doing stuff, but and, yeah. and we'll uh, sorry, John. We have we'll, some more. Um, so right now, well, for the most part, we just wanted to get um, Brian to kind of go through some of the potential services that they can offer us, and then I'm I'm going to open the floor back up to um, to any questions at the end. So uh, oh, this is there, but... <clears throat> so federal highway safety grants. Those are like click it or ticket. Yeah, or ticket. Those are the things. Stop, so I stopped and, once. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's why people call sometimes the town office and say, "Hey, why is your cruiser here? Why is Royalton and Bethel?" And sometimes that's why they're operating under a under a federal highway. They so they have a lot of cars in Bethel. So they're people. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> darn shooting. Yeah. So that's why when you see cruisers from different towns in different areas, they're probably doing what Ryan is talking about, participating in like a federal highway click it or ticket so basically the sixty five thousand that we currently basically have budgeted mm -hmm. would be kind of more of a regional type policing that you would 
No, twenty what fit us into the the piece. Sixty five grand would put a cop in your town twenty hours a week. Right. It, could you could you then kind of explain to us the the step below the Cadillac? So if we we're in the, I think it was like a hundred and quarter, which was like kind of what we call full time. I guess. Yeah, that that basically, you know, so thirty two hours a week, a hundred grand. We bump up to forty hours a week. It's one hundred twenty five is where we would come in on that. So when you when you're talking forty hours a week, is that would that be continued to be like an individual that may be well spending forty hours, but they could be in other communities? Or would that be more like, hey, you've got one person that's really in your community for forty hours? I would not do the one person. I would split it up a couple different people, but people are working different shifts because um, the goal is, you know, so if you have one person, their day shift. Yeah, you know, but you, hey, we really like him. All right, well, but all you're going to get is day shift coverage, right? Right. Right. So I think with a forty hour week position or forty hour week contract, we would, you know, because nights, weekends, and holidays are good times to have people on, right? Mm. Um, we would we would bounce that around. There wouldn't be, you know, there may be four or five people that would work this area, um, which is in line with you know the average small police department. I mean, obviously you're not getting that many, you know, 300 hours of service, but you're getting 40 hours uh, from us in your town, uh, deputy in your town, 40 hours a week for 125. So based based upon um, uh, the concerns that you heard that yeah. we kind of listed quickly, could you just briefly explain to us if if we went with the 20 hours a week, what that may look like and what things we might be able to check off this list here versus if we wanted to get more things done where sure. that next level would look like you forget some a salesman so 20 hours not going to do anything but 40 hours <laughs> you no that? um <laughs> i think it's right this is a tough budget season right yeah. you know schools are going up property to, everything's going up tough budget season um you know doubling your police budget is a it's a big ask um, I think that, you know, my personal belief is that Bethel probably could use at this point, the 40 hour coverage, right? But 20 hours is better than basically the zero that you're getting now, plus or minus. Um, I, you know, I think there's a lot more in Bethel than even like the amount of calls for service that you have looking at, uh, our computer program at non-fire emergency service calls um you're running about 900 calls per year that's including traffic stops so it's a busy little town and that's without having um i mean because how many of you kind of gave up calling right yeah right you know you need a job um yeah yeah so but i mean really you think about that and i know that you're you're half kidding but, but, but think about that. What position that, that puts somebody in that you're like, Hey, I'm sick of it. So 20 hours a week is okay. Um, you know, do I think that you need a half a million dollars, 24 seven? No, but, um, I think somewhere in the 32, you know, that's why I put them on there. I really do think that my honest belief is that to kind of turn back the tide a little bit that you need more more than 20 hours a week it, when you do do the math on it i mean it, it it's a little bit five days a week and it's even less seven days a week um you can get a lot more out of the 40 hour coverage obviously um, but it is you know almost 100 percent increase over what you're spending now so you know it looks like having a car in your town four or five days a week for you know five hours four or five hours a day um and that could look, you know, four one hour blocks or, you know, maybe they're here for four hours straight, but um, it's certainly better than what you're doing now. It sounds like with just Absolutely. the constables not being able to. Um, and also one of the things that's we're able to bring now some economy of scale, like, hey, we're saving you a little bit on your vehicle. You know, you don't have to worry about that. You write me one check and go, this is what we expect. Now it's on me to fulfill those hours. So if I've got to work on myself, that's what I'll do. Um, 
but also you don't have to worry about buying tires. You don't have to worry about paying a gas bill. You, you know, you push that all off to us and it just, it's simpler on your end, I think, but also the liability somewhat shifts away from the town. I mean, you can always be sued, but it really puts the entire liability on us, uh, especially with the constable force. It's very hard to make sure that they're where you need them to be. If they, especially if they weren't working other places. Right. That's something that we talked about. Mm -hmm. this, this was that obviously the liability and making sure that through the criminal justice training council that everybody has their right training and and you're right it is a it is a big thing and he would i just want to say too that uh, the sheriff had said that obviously we have money in our current budget and the sheriff did say that if the psych would want to he'd be willing to come in and supplement ours because we've only spent twenty four hundred dollars out of our some of out of our labor line so that you know certainly he, you know just want to let you know that sheriff did offer to pick up some hours sooner than July 1st, which is where this budget would hit. And, and, you know, part of that also is for you to go, wait a minute, we don't like this guy. We don't like his team. Like, all right, now we need to, you know, at least you'd have the money budgeted, but then you can kind of transition and go, uh, this isn't going to work for us. So I think it's a good way for you to kind of feel out, Hey, are they really providing the service that he's been up here running his mouth about? <laughs> um, as far as services that can be provided, um, you know, we're everything short of a homicide just because that's not the way the protocol works in Vermont. I think that we have, um, you know, we're doing everything from, I mean, I don't know if you saw us on dealing with the whole Kyle Pickett issue mm -hmm. where, you know, stolen car we found was in Bethel. Um, yeah, that was uh, three days I was supposed to be off. But, uh, you know, we found out there was a stolen car in Bethel. We came up to get involved. We were out serving civil process and I can dive into all the things that we do. But um, when I hear things like that, it's like, no, put the effort into it. So we got a violent felon off the street, um, seized three stolen guns in that process. Um, two of them were loaded in the car that I was chasing around. Um, but so we really can provide basically anything for when you think of modern law enforcement service, um, we can provide that. Uh, I have a lot of, I have some very young guys uh, that are new and fresh on the job and eager to learn. And I have a lot of folks with 15 to 30 years of experience that are, are really good mentors. Um, and as we pick up more towns, I've got people that want to come work. Uh, again, I don't know exactly why that is, but I think we're doing a good job. I've started paying a little bit more. We've got good equipment. And just the culture and the ethos of the department is making people want to come work here. So, um, so one of the things that we'll have, and you might have told me about, is um, if we go away from the constable thing, is we have to pick up the animal control piece he's, of it. Do you, said do you yeah. offer that? Yeah, we do. Do that. Okay. We do to make it easier. And we do have a contract with the local. Um, vet office right down here sure. that, so that we kind of use them as that's where they go so they get care and then they're released yeah. back. I mean, not that we have a lot of we haven't knocked those cases much. that kind of hit or miss, but yeah, yeah animal stuff, a service that we'd have to fill somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's just part of, you know, when, when, how I look at these contracts is that we are your full service law enforcement, we're your police department now. Um, and these are part of, you know, the tasks. Um, are we going to, maybe come out at three in the morning because somebody's dog's barking, maybe not. But yeah. when you have, um, you know, nuisance animals, all dog bites, all these things, you know, or, or animal cruelty cases, um, we're certainly equipped to handle that. And that would be part of our normal duties, how I look at it. Is there anything out of curiosity that, that you can't do? I mean, I remember when they kind of limited, like if someone was a 2E, they couldn't investigate like a homicide, but obviously you are a full certified law enforcement officer but are there things that sheriffs can't do like you still do on time days and the whole thing right yeah we have death investigators so that's what I thought. uh that's an individual officer thing right that's what i thought but as a group as we, a sheriff, yes we do everything that's what We're, i thought yeah there's lots of us with you know i've been through fbi crisis negotiator school i'm a certified death investigator as a firearms instructor i've been through nasro which is the national association of school resource officers there um basic and advanced school resource officer classes, um, the, lots of training. So training has been a huge focus of my agency. That's great. Um, we brought in uh, interview and interrogation course. We sent 
couple folks at dealing with people, uh, folks with autism in crisis. Um, we sent three of our folks to that the other day. Um, just huge, mm -hmm. huge on training. So um, even though some of our, we started at there's two certifications in Vermont. There's a level two and a level three. And you're like, well, where's level one? Well, they never made it, but they put it in the books. So level two officers went through a, a much more condensed law enforcement school, we'll call it for two weeks. Level three officers spent, you know, 16 weeks or, or the equivalent in an out-of-state academy. Um, level three officers can investigate, you know, all felony, anything, essentially. Level two officers have some uh, restrictions on what they can, can right? They can still respond and go, hey, this is an aggravated assault. Somebody hit somebody with a hatchet or something. Well, we're going to make sure that there's a supervisor there that is, um, you know, certified that can investigate the crime. So we we can check all those boxes. Yeah, no, it's, it's a valid question. And some people have concerns about that, but we're, we're making sure that our level twos are very well up to speed. Uh, logistics question. Yep. Uh, you mentioned with sort of the, the model of the 40 hour a week mm -hmm. that logistically for you, it would sort of break down across maybe four to six people, right? Would that be a similar breakdown if we went for a 20 or a 32 hour a week or would it end up being a, a sort of smaller subset of people that would patrol this? Yeah, I think four or five was probably maybe on or five. Certainly was probably on the higher end. Um, generally, certain folks work certain areas and they kind of get involved. Like I said, our patrol force is still probably the ones that majority work patrol because we also cover courts and civil process and all that. But it's maybe 12 or 13 that are really doing a lot of patrol so even at that number you would start to really get to know the community but the goal is that my folks are involved in the community and they're you know it just seems like it's it's worked very well and some of the feedback that we've been getting um sharon wrote us a nice email about you know the interactions we've had there one of my guys stopped somebody wrote him a couple tickets but like was very kind and like gave him a lot of good direction on how to fix his car and the guy wrote me an email and said, hey, it's going to sound weird. I got to stop. But it was it was a really fantastic experience. He's very kind. So that's the, you know, this dichotomy of like, hey, we want that Andy Griffin kind of model. But also, we're not afraid to, if you know, kick in drug dealers' doors and do all those things. I mean, we've been involved with search warrants in Sharon, um, where we pull, we, get, we secured seven stolen firearms from a, a burglary. Um, we... We've done that in, you know, we work with Killington and federal partners, um, you know, all total this year, I think we've got somewhere around 30 stolen guns off the street. So, I mean, we're touching all parts of law enforcement, but my goal is that I don't want my team to be some sort of occupying force. I want you to be comfortable going up and saying hello to my team. Hey, I've got a problem. And that seems to be the, the culture that has trickled down from the top. Well, we have about... Uh, I mean, realistically, we get a little less than five minutes, but I'll probably open it up to like five or 10 minutes of, of comments. I know John was last to the party, so I'll let him go first on a comment. Um, if anybody online has any other comments they want to do, just raise your hand and then uh, Therese will, will keep tabs on people online and I'll keep tabs on people in person. So. Mm -hmm. I just check the box and I knew the word uh, game word or the state trooper from the people for two minutes from the barracks over here. So the last time we called, there were, I guess, kids on ATVs ripping around in the woods and occasionally high caliber shots and stuff and so i called and i got i was talking to a dispatcher in springfield or something and then she switched me over to 911 i guess did you call 911 yeah okay yep. but so i had to go through that extra step and then when i got to someone there they said well you know we don't have anyone in your area 
and I can try to get them to give you a call before they go off shift at five o'clock. Because these kids are going to be gone, you know. Yeah. Well, and try to get an identification of their, you know. Well, I got one. Like I don't want to go up in the woods with you. And how that feel, right? You terrible. take the time to call, right? And then that's the response you got. Felt terrible. Right? Yeah. And I'm, so all I'm saying, in some ways, is that. There needs to be, you know, I, I know you're coming into a job and there are certain things that you can see in it and other things you're working on yeah. to make your mark on it. And I think that's great. But I think at the same time, it's really important for people to know that if a situation is going on, I don't care if it's a state trooper or a game warden or whoever, but someone is going to say, this is, this is something that needs to be addressed now. Yeah, and I hope, um, you know, I can't promise every single time, I, I don't want to be made a liar, but when I hear stories like that, it, it makes my blood boil, right? Because you took the time, it's, all, it's never comfortable calling the police, right? It's never like a fun thing. It makes you feel uncomfortable. You call and then, it's almost like you're revictimized. And I hate to be like, dramatic about it, but I mean, think about it. It does feel like you're kind of victimizing that way. So customer service, at the end of the day, a lot of people customer service. And, I, and I'm pushing very hard to make sure that you provide the best customer service in the industry. I'm not sure if that's, you know, we've achieved that yet, but as we add more towns, as you know, hopefully we get some more contracts where we put more people out of control, that is the goal that this, those things don't happen anymore. And I can't promise you it will be 100%, but my folks want to take calls. They want to go out and investigate crime. They want to be busy. Um, and that's the push from the top, you know, that I go out and, and chase cars with people and go to calls and, and do things when I, when I can. So that's the culture that we're building is, is, is to take care of things like that. My wife is an MD, and I know well the concept of triage. Right. And obviously, if there's a crisis going on, it has to be not 20 minutes with the dispatcher in Springfield. Yeah. You know, it needs to be, I'm on it. Yeah, and I hope I'm, again, I think that's where we're at and the direction that we're heading. Um, and I'm sorry that that's, everyone's got my own stories, and I'm sorry if that's the case. Any, any other comments from anybody else? Uh, what other towns around here? I know you said Sharon or any other towns close by that you're contracted mm -hmm. with. And then when does the clock start 20 or 40 hours start ticking? Does it start when you leave Sharon on a call to head here? No, it's like when, like you're, when you hit the town line. The it's, town, it's just kind of how we're, uh, how we're keeping track of it. So okay. we're not charging for travel time or any of that. Uh, Rochester, Sharon, Barnard, Pomfret, Plymouth, Reading, Bridgewater, we're back in Toxwood, uh, Heartland, and I think that's okay. Yeah, we're, talk, we're a meeting stoppage. So, so you're in some of the surround. I'm just yeah, thinking yeah. like a response time. If you don't have somebody in town, you know, there'd yeah. be somebody. In, yeah, around here. It's I know I've seen you going over Camp Brook a lot more lately. Yeah. Well, um, now that it's closed. Did you know there's a, a section that's closed? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. watched you twice that day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> watched you go up and come back down in a hurry. But, please. but uh, you know, so my goal is to eventually you know, provide service and all your stuff and yeah. all the surrounding towns that have full-time, you know, law enforcement. But uh yeah, odds are that there'll be somebody in a fairly close town at that point. Yeah, and I guess it's and I guess at this point, if it's a half hour or 40 minutes, it's better than nothing. Yeah. You know, and I'm not I don't mean that to be facetious, but I, I think as we get if we build this, I think we're, you know, is it going to be a five minute response time from the barracks like it used to be? No. But uh, yep. it's going to be a lot better than, than it is now, I guess. Yeah. And I'd say the 30 to 40 minutes to get here, if you're willing to follow up 
on it as opposed to they come by and they're like well we'll drive down that way and that's that you know yeah. is a lot different than we'll call you we'll we're here you. and now let's try to figure out what happened and see if we can find that yeah so so two things on that right one i haven't met a camera i don't like so i like being on facebook and on the news for doing positive stuff with the department and i like putting bad guys in jail so for us the follow-up on these things um is very important because it's important to me so like go out and make cases. And when you're saying, hey, I've got neighbors, you know, on this end and that end, and now, you know, well, all right, let's put a stop to it. And I've got a lot of proactive cops that want to do stuff. So on those issues, like I think that you'll see that we're um, again, it's back to the customer service thing, right? Following up um, and having the same people work kind of the resident deputies, making sure that the same people are working those areas, not you know, one person. You know, you work one day a week here or something. So you talk about one of the folks on the online you talk about like domestic acts, right? And that's a really important one to not slough off and to actually follow up and make sure that you're uh, you're investigating all the way through on those and not going, ah, there's one big state. Like there's a lot more to interpersonal violence and domestic violence. So putting the effort into those calls. Yes. You served over Steve's the new work. Wasn't that on your um I feel like that was on your bio? Yeah. So do you have a rapport with like the VA or people that you feel like if you if you had a veteran who was experiencing some rough times, PTSD or acting out or something, do you have some? I'm assuming that you have some sort of um not only as a vet, so you can right. certainly work with them coming from the same background, but you have, um, do you have contact where you can help maybe refer them to places where they can get the assistance they need? Yeah, there's several respond. <clears throat> uh, I don't think I named them all off the top of my head, probably. Uh, there's several of us that are veterans. Mm -hmm. So yes, as a, as a vet myself, um, serving with the Air Reserve in Iraq, the Cook Iraq Week in the 09, and then switch units to the Connecticut Air National Guard and to uh, Afghanistan and Monastery. But um, that was a lovely quote. Well, but so, yes, um, we had character, I'm going to name names. We had a character that in one of the neighboring towns that drives a super and keeps in everybody's windows and creates a whole lot of havoc. Uh, and we're a Navy hat. And then, all right, this is crisis. We bond with VA. So let's go from the VA. Uh, guys work really hard and you know, talk about there's actually not a veteran, just a point of radio. Yeah. 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 But um this idea of helping people in crisis mm -hmm. and not creating their jeopardy, um, uh, we we've done really well in several situations. And I'm just trying to give you and sell, 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 but we have done very well in those situations. Um in, in the last decade, right, we've seen a lot of time where law enforcement has maybe not done the right thing or done what was trained into them as the right thing at the time, right? And we don't really, you can just name all these different scenarios. But as we've realized as a profession that we need to evolve, um, that has gone over very well here with, with my group. Um, we'll use, I'm trying to get funded for our own crisis intervention social worker scenario and what's going to happen this budget cycle in the town. But uh, we also have access to these has both barracks, or we actually have three barracks that work in the town. Uh, but we have access to their social work that yeah. we need to call it that pay. Nice. But my folks are very good with crisis intervention and resolution. Thank you for your service. So, yes, that's what I wondered if you had people that were, you know, just as an outside report, we're certainly seeing more of that now where people that um, this mental health crisis and maybe they need assistance. Obviously the VA isn't that far away. So it's nice to know that you have a rapport with them if that was a situation that arose. Yeah. Thank you. And a couple of things. So I mean, being in Bethel, I know when, you know, we would say back in the old days, but mm -hmm. you know, we've always kind of been an umbrella town for VSP and not only was VSP in our backyard, but we often had uh, residents of our town that worked for VSP. So there was always like that you know, even if they weren't really on duty, you know, uh, like, like Mr. Feeney, you know, he used to show up at the school for the first hour of the morning to see kids, you know, come into school or once in a while he'd give a kid, you know, a ride to school, you know, all those different things, the blue lights and, you know, it was all, um, you know, having that community involvement. Um, 
And back then, you know, our, what we used to have for actually patrol time was like 10 hours a week. That's, you know, our, our constables were 10 hours a week. I think our budget was like twelve thousand dollars a year. But we but we had all this extra. other extra, mm -hmm. you know, just from being, you know, in the same area with them. So and where I'm getting at with this is so we used to budget 10, 12 hours worth of time. And then the reason why we were up to 20 hours of the budgeting now is because, you know, that normal um community policing of 10 or 12 hours started taking 18 to 20 hours because I don't know, God forbid you pulled over somebody on a DUE, then you had to follow up in court and paperwork and all this stuff. So if if we are doing a sign on with you guys for I don't know, either 20 or 30 hours or whatever, does that does that account <laughs> does that account for all the behind the scenes court trips and you know all you know all the red tape and stuff that comes with everything nowadays or would that be is that extra or yeah, I think with the exclusion the way we bring in into our other contracts and the exclusion of like complex criminal investigations first of all cops on the law don't testify a lot in court like it just doesn't it just doesn't like very few uh cases go to trial on the law um and so there's not generally a huge expense with that um, obviously, if somebody uh, has a DUI arrest, there's a couple hours of paperwork. Like, they're going to be seeing someone are doing that paper. Like, that's just part of the process. You're going to pay for that if you pay if you have your own police department. Um, being a contractual organization, uh, the county doesn't fund any law enforcement. So every all the costs you see out on duty for me um, are paid for the contract. So. Uh, there's a little bit of that. I think it I think ultimately comes out of that. Uh, if that makes sense. Like, we're, you're still going to get covered. Right. And you should get it. Because, I mean, that was, I mean, I, I know we kind of said it's 20 hours of patrol time, but it really always was like 10 or 12 that turned into 20 because we had, you know, behind the scenes stuff. If it was a DUE or, or, or more, um, or training, you know, if you had to go for training for the day, right. that might be that, or you're paying for somebody to go somewhere. Um, yeah, so you're those, the exception of like a major case that eats up some of your budget, um, you're, the training and all that is kind of put into the numbers I'm getting. Okay. So you don't have to worry about the That's nice. individual factors that go to, you know, 30 hours to, to be a cop in months, 30 hours in the end to it's just a mandatory minimum training you have in there. Uh, so that's kind of hard to put into the budget. Okay. okay. Um, so any... then as far as the contract, that's something that you negotiate, I assume, with each town. I know I've negotiated with other sheriff's departments before and where we couldn't ask you for targeted, I couldn't ask them for anything, <laughs> frankly. But if we had like a targeted patrol area, if I was getting a bunch of calls and I could call you and say, hey, look, um, people are going nuts on Camp sure. Bell or Gage sure. or something. Sure. Um, you know, you would be able to do a little bit of target or, or let your person on duty know that we're getting a bunch of complaints. Right. And here's my thing. Like, no, I don't want like your highness to provide law enforcement service, right? right? So I don't want every week go, you need to do this, you need to do this. Right, exactly. But also, two things, right? I'm a politician, mm -hmm. I want to keep my constituents happy and I want to get elected, right? So there's that. Yeah. And then two, we're contractual or organizations basically right. almost entirely funded through contracts and custom service. So if I'm not doing what you're asking me to do, you're not going to be happy, you're not going to want to write a paycheck to me. Right. So for me, the whole idea of this is a community problem solvers. You have problems, you tell us what the problems are. I always I tell my guys, I always check in the town halls, especially in the smaller towns. Town hall malls is a very good gas station. But you're telling me, hey, these are the problems, go fix it. And if you're like, hey, we're having problems from the school at 7 a.m., you know, all right, we'll put people there at 7 a.m. Uh, that makes sense. So it's not, you know, it's a very vague contract as far as how we provide a good service, but, okay. but I'm working directly with you or whoever I can charge with that one mm -hmm. is working with you to check those boxes to make sure we provide a service that makes sense. Then can towns also contract with you outside of the contract, say we were doing a construction project and we needed lights on a project for a couple of days? Is that something that you, outside of our contract, not our 20 hours, but outside of that? 
Did you miss the part? Or, hey, yeah, we'll take all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be he's supposed to chirp you if that was something that you did because you were too busy with the contracts. But no, I think we're, we will. We try to always fulfill everything. Every once in a while, we just need that. We need. It's in a dangerous area. Yeah, that's right. Pike is always in the bottom. That's right. We can never do. Yeah, because sometimes as a town, we're just doing work in a dangerous area, and it's like you just need. You need lights. So you need a train. You need an officer. And I think why she says that is once in a while, if there was something going on, and back in the days when we had a constable in, in and around, you could just say, "Hey, could you go hang out there for two hours and make yeah. sure they get that done?" So no one gets killed but, because they're yeah. running. You know, yeah. people are right. crazy going through stop signs, construction signs, and so that's nice to know that we can contract with you outside of that if we had issues. So, so we thank you. So we appreciate you coming out and and spending time with us this evening, and and hopefully we were able to. <laughs> um get all the feedback that that you needed and and uh, i know the board and myself um will be kind of going through weighing the the levels of um potential uh policing that we can do and looking at the budget and looking at what our constituents want us to do and see so um teresa will probably reach out with you with any yeah. other yeah uh, with any other questions yeah he's and... been great about getting right back to me if we have a question so and and we did in this draft budget that we're going to look at later we did put the sixty five thousand dollar in in this budget we had about fifty seven thousand and change in the prior budget so this is sixty five thousand and then there's still some in there for additional signage and things but we may be able to um you know reduce that i mean we bought like a speed cart dolly that was on christian hill and then we also bought more of the flashing lights to come into town. So we talked about buying those and those are like seven grand, but that may be something that we, you know, skip over next year. Um, I'm assuming the sheriff's department has speed cards on dollies or whatever. We only have one, but I need one. yeah. No, I don't oh, we only have a little one, but, um, <laughs> but anyways, so, so we did just so you all know that are here online, we did. When I did the draft of this budget, I did put the sixty-five thousand dollar amount in there. So, so we have something to start from. Sure. Starting point. All right. All right. I thank you so much thank you. for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Drive safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that was so that is in the budget. So when we get to budget discussion later, just so y'all know, it's it's something's in there. All right, Alex. You're up. Alex. <laughs> half the way around the ground, they're flipping to use the same road we've been running for the winter snowmobile season and the map on the I don't know if it's. It is. It's on file at town office. I double checked the other day. I didn't know if it was there. I found the Yeah, no. Basically, everything's the same as it has been the last five years, 15, whatever. With any of the trails or any detours that you'll have this year, or is it? Or no, we good? actually we put a lot of money into a lot of. We, I, I was on an excavator about forty five minutes before I got here. Uh, still working on it. Um, now we've gotten just about everything back together again. And, uh, Davis Road. We put a bunch of the Davis Road, Woodland Road. Both of them got fixed up on that sign. Um, well, there's a few others up on top of the hill where a whole bunch of the water bars, any of them, that, that has been compromised pretty bad. So uh, most of that has been taken care of. And uh, yeah, no, we're actually in good shape. Royal Prince Trails got thrust upon us this summer as well. So we've been oh, wow. adding that to the mix. Bridges, two bridges, and some other issues over there, but it's been a busy fall. <laughs> <laughs> For everybody. <laughs> and John Jacob. How does this does this fit into the class four? Yeah. Yes. A lot of the trails that we use are well, a lot of the the roads are out of on class four roads. So we run quite a few class four roads right. with the snowmobile trail. Um, we also run some class three sections like we'll in the grade group have to run as a connector. Um, over the interstate bridge. Yeah, over the interstate bridge on 
Christian Hill, we run that. A um, little bit up on Hooper Hollow, short run there. But we do run quite a bit of class four roads in addition to a lot of private property. So, so I've got two. One, we lose quite a bit of our property to. Okay, where? Um, Christian Hill. Okay. 1037, where the gates are. But okay, yeah. I'm putting in stuff. I just there. went and put some no ATV signs up. I saw. We have people going around <laughs> them, and, you know. Yeah, I went and put some blockers up there and some signs. And, yeah. I, I went down the road, turned around, and came back, and they had already run right through them. Yeah. So, if someone wants to. I think that person was coming off of uh, McCullough Run. So, yeah. I think that's where that ATV was coming from. Yeah. There's a couple of dirt bikes up there in yeah. Holland and Steve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great. <laughs> and about, I mean, that was the, sort of what I was referring to you in the episode earlier in the fall. There were, you know, like there were obviously alcohol involved, yelling and screaming, and of course litter following it and all that stuff. And so when I hear class four roads, it because we have a there's a class uh four road that goes across the near near Hank Haynes. Yep. Comes up there and it comes and it actually the two properties are ours and his. And then for a long stretch, it's just ours. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a gorge. It's probably five or six feet deep in one section there. There's trees down. I think the last person to ride a bicycle from there was probably John Dunn. And that's is that on what we ride? No. Okay. But I'm saying <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to because that last four road then comes out. To Christian Hill, yeah, <clears throat> to our front yard. Okay, and so that obviously, you know, that doesn't make us feel any pleasant to think that you guys want to say, yeah, this is a class four road, therefore we should be able to to run the machines on. Yeah, no, it's not. It's it's pretty much only certain ones that are. And 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 the other piece of it is that to me. You know, I think it's I was sitting in about the same place in this room in 2017 when in ex additional business I stood up and said, you know, we as a town, it would be good if we endorse the you know non-binding resolution to get our state to 90% reduction in, in carbon stuff by 2050. And now it's you know, people are doing the first 35 and stuff. But, um, you know, it's a concern to me in some ways. You know, it's, you know, we have been totally, it's great. We have, like the snow machine there. My wife walks on it and it's packed out and stuff. But sometimes people are going through there at midnight or two in the morning, and, you know, yelling. And, and you know, yeah, I went... Uh, for a number of years, I've been skiing at Mad River. Um, you know, the camping was just even that moving. Now I'm down at Snowball. Mm -hmm. And last winter, they got two electric snowmobiles. And with regen and stuff, they can run them all day up and down the hill. And it's quiet. Yeah. There's actually one guy in the club that does have one of them. Yeah. I think that's the way it yeah. needs to go. And you know, and you know, we have never anyone who's ever asked for permission to hunt. It's always sure. Thank you for asking. Yeah. But it's the people that you don't want to hunt. Yeah. Well, and unfortunately, that a lot of it's the same thing with air bikes, wheelers, sleds. The ones that ask permission aren't the problem, and, right. and aren't the ones that are you know. The one that ran right past the no ATV sign that I had literally just put up, and they, I took, I don't know if you saw what I had done, I took a couple of deadfall logs and put them up, and I mean, literally, I literally, I drove down, and I turned around at Dave Eddie's, and I came back, and the guy had come down through. I wish I had been there another three minutes, you know, and, um, yeah, and it, you know, it's it's an interesting time. The other thing is, 
I just wanted to mention again in, in this town meeting that the class four road in, oh, I don't know, before the year 2000, I think, there was a moment when Dave Eddy and Mo Brigham and someone else, and Carl Russell was the, was the select chair then, and he held a meeting up there because they were saying that the class four road was on our property. There were two farms, the Wallace farm, Eddie farm, and then the Davis farm, which is what we have now. And uh, we went out there and they're saying, oh yeah, no, this is the road. And there's a big stone wall that's the dividing line. But when Bob Dean bought the old Wallace Eddie place, he subdivided it, and 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 uh, Forrest, I can't remember his name, and the first there, they they said, hey, no, that road is on your side of the wall, and it was actually Gene Burn took me into the vault, and we found an atlas of right of ways in the town of Bethel from I think 1830 or something, and it was like very clear they had a sign right of way from. Farm Walls, <laughs> not from Farm Davis. And so, okay, so and I, yeah, I know Carl got that. that and he said, no, you know, if you want to struggle this, the town is not going to hire a lawyer and prove that it's there or something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I think that that's, that's also the class four roads are different. And on the, on the original atlas, it had the, the Farmer Wallace who signed it. He said, I'm given a right of way, but if I've got crop in the field and I don't, and I'm not ready to harvest, I can close it mm -hmm. anytime I want to. But, so I think that, you know, that class four is, you know, very important, but it's not just a blank check. To yeah. Do yeah. Do the yeah. So you Class four and a couple of here. Yes. Correct. So just add maps on file. Yep. So, okay. All in favor? Aye. All set, Dave? Yeah. Dean? Okay. All right. Big deal. Um, and then uh, I'll just open up to public comments. So anything that wasn't on the agenda, anybody wants to talk about something now is the time to do it. I'll look online first. See if there's anybody online that wants the uh, any public comment. It's a few people this evening. Big turnout. Just Paul. Paul's just saying hi. Okay. Paul's Any, just saying hello. Anybody in person <laughs> anything that isn't on the agenda that one would like to talk about? No, I wasn't just saying hi. Oh, I thought you were oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to thank Sheriff Palmer for coming by. It seems like a natural, unfortunately, a natural progression that we've that we're going through with our constable department. Uh, I remember when we had, you know, a constable lived in town and worked part time, and everything was nice, and he was my oil delivery guy on the side. Uh, and then we moved into the pattern where we had to we shared a constable with two other towns. And, you know, things are getting a little more heated at that point, but obviously it wasn't working. So we went to the model of actually hiring a constable. And that seems to have run its course. Uh, so it's great that we're, it's, unfortunately, we have to move in this direction um, to, to look at signing up with uh, Windsor County to help serve, you know, what the, the residents of the town are looking for. So yes, it's going to be a little more expensive, but uh, it seems like that's the path that we need to go along. So thank you to the select board for bringing this conversation out. Uh, it's been a long time, you know, in the works, and uh, it was great to have him there tonight. Thank you. Okay. Any, any, anybody in person, John? What's the next step? Oh, go ahead. Next step for deciding on a package. 
so it's in the budget and we'll get there in a little while. It's on the agenda. So yeah, like I absolutely. said, I threw the 65,000 in there. Um, obviously this year is a tough budget year, as you said, it, you know, hits on uh, insurance, health insurance, all that sort of stuff. So it's something that we, so I put it in at 65 because we obviously all agreed that we weren't going to do the half million. And um, so I'm not sure, you know, one of the things that in my mind is that if we're at the 65, we bring them in sooner to start to pick up Oscar's extra hours, we put them at the 65. We know we're going to benefit from the other grant money that he's getting, the federal the money that he's getting, because he's going to come in to do um, look at her ticket and other things. So we're definitely going to see an increase in hours just because of that money as well. So it makes me wonder in a way, if we start with the $65,000 budget, we get a little extra hours because we know we're going to benefit from click it or ticket and the federal highway ramp because they get points, which means they get more money and then see how it rolls, see if everybody's happy with them. And then maybe next year we segue into more hours, but that was just my thought, but you pay me to be conservative with your tax dollars. So, <laughs> but we can, you know, we'll still discuss it. Yeah. And we'll get that. We'll, we'll be starting to break through some of the budget items tonight and it'll be an ongoing discussion between now and yeah. mid-January because mid-January yeah we have to have the budget finalized, by the second so. third week in January we have to have finalized so we can go to print with it so the other thing you know um, we could do is ask him if he's at 20 hours he gave us a 20 hour price and he gave us a 32 hour price so we went from 65,000 to 100,000 is there a 25 hour price you know what I mean like is there maybe there's between the right, six, I don't know. Yep. And then there was the full time, which was the half mil. The 40 was 125,000, 32 was 100,000, and the 20 was the 65,000. So, as he said, he's a salesman. We all knew he was going to push the bigger package, which we knew that coming out of the gate. But I think to go from what we have now, which is, you know, not much, to having him here, he's going to want more hours, as he said that just showing the colors is going to make a huge difference, I think, in the community, but. Can you ask him as well, Ms. Jesse, if you want to use up some of that money right now? Excuse me? If I didn't hear while you. we're deciding which package, can he get here and use some of that money now? He said he would, yep, he totally agreed that so he would So maybe that. the next coming weeks, we'll see him around? Maybe the beginning, we haven't talked about whether or not we're gonna pick him up. I mean, it was kind of, People, we select board wanted to hear what he had to say tonight because the yeah. only people that had met with him prior was Chris and I. This is the first time the whole select board got but to see. While him. we decide if we go with them or yeah. how many hours he can come in and and hang out for a little while. Yeah, yeah. I we don't see why not. I mean, it, it we obviously have the money in the budget that we need to spend, and yeah. so we need to get. It would be make sense that way two people can get used to him and see him if they see him a little bit, and then he comes on in July people kind of get more comfortable with them as well. Alex? The uh, ticket revenue from writing tickets, <laughs> does that go towards? It, it, the town gets a very small okay. percentage of that. It's almost not even worth mentioning. It's, okay. I tried that last time. it's yeah. you know, I don't know what the percentage is. It's very small. <laughs> so, the last time. So. Um, also it depends where they write them. If they write them on state highway, we don't see any money. Yeah. If we if they write them here, I think we probably get thirty percent. I didn't change the budget number for tickets because obviously we're looking for community policing and you know stopping people. Sometimes there's really good drug busts happen that way by pulling them over. And so if that ticket revenue went up, that's something we could increase next year. But it's hard to know out of the gate what we're gonna get. So yeah. and like I said, we get such a small percentage of the ticket anyways even if it happens here so it wouldn't offset the no <laughs> no no which no That'd be a lot of they tickets. used to and that, <laughs> well i mean they just the yeah Canberra, friday afternoon yeah. Yeah. Friday to about noon yeah. oh they could six, sit on seven o'clock they yeah. could sit on christian hill yeah. on that new paving and be good could be all day, yeah. all day. Yeah. yes john this raises in my mind a very interesting perspective on things and last night i happened to hear a program on the radio, and it had to do with Mayor Long in Boston, and she decided to take a look at 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 why people are not utilizing the Boston T as effectively as they should be, and she took three lines, and she said, "We're going to make them free, 
So there's no longer, you know, there's no longer someone fiddling with a dollar, you know, the backup line waiting to get on and stuff. And and the study showed that what what they wanted to look at was what's the annual budget of these three mines. And it was a lot of money, like a billion dollars. But of that, the percentage of of the, that was funded by fair pain was almost zero. It was like less than 2%. And that, that it's kind of like in, in a lot of these things, to me, with the policing, you know, it's, you know, you don't really want your tax dollars going towards court appearances and stuff like that. And I know that was talked about here, but I think that what we want to see in most part is where are we serving the communities in the most effective way? And how can we, you know, how can we be smart about whatever it is, whether or not it's electricity in the community or all of these different things. And um, anyway, I just think it's important for us not to simply always be focusing on the salesmanship part of it or the revenue policing or they or those other, you know, those are all interesting, but you know, they're not really advancing the way we look at how we handle municipal resources. And, and, ask, and ask it a lot of times on whatever it is that we might collect revenues on in town. It's it, it's a it's a very fraction of whatever it costs. So like for instance, the pool, you know, thing, you know, revenue that we collect for the pool is just a fraction of the cost of the pool. You know, it's kind of more of a you know That's community it, service. Yeah. <laughs> so if you look at it and say, well, if we weren't charging that little amount of money, more kids would be there more often you know and so we look at that and say is it really worth it for us to charge something because there's a cost to the collection of the money there's a cost to that policing if you will of that service and so this is just you know, this is just a comment we're making okay anything else in so, person uh, yeah uh, I really appreciate that there's a tonight. And um, so I'd like to announce that I'm not going to run again. I've served three terms on this board, plus a little bit because I was appointed before the election. Um, it's been really a great experience, and it's been a really hard decision to come to. Um, unfortunately, a big part of that is that my work now takes me away from town for almost half of the year. And it's just made it really hard to be a more active member in the way that I would like to be. And I think that there's some, right. you know, hopefully maybe somebody in this crowd, but I think that there are other citizens who have the ability to be more present than I am right now. And so I'm hoping someone will step up and step into that role. And, um, I'd say no. Oh yeah, there's a rejection. I think that's on the floor. We're going to say no to we'll that. We'll negotiate this. We well, um, have petition passed right now. That was yeah, a good I, thing about the floor vote. Yeah. So motion it. I just said got you in anyway. I think so. part of what's important to mention here is because because we no longer are doing floor votes. If somebody is interested in running, you need to start a petition process now and have that in. I don't know the exact. I don't know either. Dates. Talk to Pam. Um, I can't. Seven remember. Monday or seven Mondays prior or whatever. I, I, I don't like mid January. I would hate to steer someone wrong so just yeah. talk yeah. to Pam she can give you a petition and and like no so yeah. but I just want to say thank you petition. so much for your service thank you we'll so much thank you so um so yeah if you're interested you'd have to talk to Pamela I completely forgot about the floor vote thing and yeah. I guarantee a lot of this town has so can I make the suggestion Teresa that you put something in front porch forum a little bit before that deadline really starts to happen in January so that people can know because that's going to, I think that's might catch some people out, especially some of the people who may not have, might have very busy lives and not, might not be able to pay attention as much as mm -hmm. others. I could ask Pam to do it. I like to think that if someone wants to run to be a select board member, that they would have taken the time to study the rules so they'd be as committed and as creep as the running as that. But I would certainly ask Pam to do that because I don't people know are that that's the things happening a certain oh, way, and they will assume, oh, well, you nominate me when we get to town meeting, and then oh, right. it doesn't. And you're happen. like too late. No, can't exactly. Do. So, so I'll tell Pam or ask Pam to put 
post on front porch forum about the deadlines just because there are deadlines. Bring public attention because people will just be expecting to show up at town meeting and, and do it the yeah. way we've always done well, it. Luckily, they'll that see, won't work. Yeah, they'll see the town report too. But so I could say petitioning for articles and mm -hmm. Australian ballot. Yeah. Um, something in the chat. Yeah. Uh, well, Gene had his hand up. He said, I "But I will have Pam do it." Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, listening to Lindley, I think it is uh, appropriate for me to let you know that I am seriously considering not running for a second term uh, as well. So there will be plenty of opportunity for people to uh, to serve. It's an important uh, effort and uh, something that people will enjoy. Well, thank you, Jean. We, so we will do, I will pass Becky's request on to Pam so that Pam can get the information out for people who are interested. I, I believe that she's handed out two petitions so far. So there are at least a couple people interested. Um, and Lily is messaging me in the portal saying, hey, Becky, she wants you to know that um, there is the town meeting committee outreach committee and that she said, uh, is working on engagement, um, please let Becky know. <laughs> so uh, they're also putting stuff out too, but we will definitely, since Pam is the keeper of the rules, we'll have her do it that way. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna be misquoted because I'd, I'd have to go back and look. And she can also point people to um, like Secretary of State's office or whatever they need to do. So we'll we'll make a note, but- um, If anybody wants to just chat about it or what it's what it's like, you know, what my experience or anybody else's experiences, I think we're all open to that. It was really helpful for me. I sat down with Carl Russell when he was chair and talked through it. And then, you know, it was a really informative process and helped me come to the decision to run for the select board. So by all means, reach out. Yeah. The other thing I can say that, and I said this to Denise, uh, and obviously she's sitting here. I've said it to other people that I know are running now. Which is if you were interested in being on the select board, it's a great idea to start attending the select board meetings on a regular basis because you may have one particular issue um, that's your issue, but it's bigger than that. It's 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 a bunch of stuff. It's always the business of the town. So I've encouraged people if you want to run for select board, or you're interested, start coming to the meetings. That way, when if you get elected in March and you roll into it, it's not all Greek to you. There will be stuff that we do that is that we've talked about that maybe we haven't recently. Um, because we get stuck in, you know, warnings and budgets and stuff. But I do encourage people to come. Also, if you're running and you're talking, it gets your name on camera. People get to see you. They hear what you're about. And so it helps, you know, through the election process. So and so when Joe Russo starts passing his petition around to get on the select board, he'll know. He people will know him. Mayor. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So. All right. So that's a public yep. comment. Is there an update on the opening of the book? It's going to be extended into January um possibly i'm saying the 10th i think it may be open before that but i'm not committed to i don't have a date yet but it's definitely going to be extended yep so we apologize but i think the ride around is much nicer than the ride over anyways in my opinion i've ridden to rochester a couple times recently and going over camp brook road can be rough and the ride around state take remote care of that road <laughs> so so we're looking for maybe into the 10th of january so but I just put a post on Front Porch Forum and Facebook today. So we apologize for any inconvenience. <clears throat> All right. Did you put the comments off the back? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> for everything. <laughs> for everything, yeah. On the, um, the principal, when he does, uh, well, when he does feel that's fine, what's going to happen to the vehicle afterwards? Well, select board, get, select board gets it. <laughs> get it running to make it they're going to take turns. The, the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, no, I thought this that, just kind of curious on it. Prob so, probably, so, Doug. Since not gonna, since we're not going to be invested money into it for right. gas and maintenance and stuff like that. So, I, I think what Therese and I were just kind of kicking around first is I, again, we, you know, if, if, Sounds like we are going to sign up the sheriff's department. Just got to figure out how many hours. I, I think it'd probably be in our best interest to at least just leave the vehicle alone for maybe the first year. Just, I mean, because last thing you want to do is sell the vehicle and then find out that that didn't work. And 
oh, the greatest person ever just moved in the town that could have been the constable. And, you know, so maybe, maybe there's an opportunity for us to put it up for a year um, somewhere. Um, so if anybody has a place that we can park the vehicle for a year. Rent it. And, and it's then if everything fun. seems like it's going well with the sheriff's department, then we could look into, you know, unloading it. Um, I think at that point, and because because we found out that those cars, um, well, they're they're very well. This was before the whole automobile issues, mm -hmm. but those cars in general are kind of hard to find, and we can't afford brand new ones, so we have to find like halfway decent used patrol car, which you know that those are very hard to find. And even at that, we I think we paid what ten grand or something for yeah. it. So, mm -hmm. and then and then. Then, then, then you have to upfit it with all the equipment, which costs a lot of money, and you know, lettering and lights and you know all that stuff. So, yeah. I think that's what we talked about is potentially just. Um, I think that's a good idea. We'll keep it. Around that that's a good idea. <laughs> so we won't talk about it outside of this room. Yeah, just move it around. We're going to camp for one day. It's harder for the day. Yeah, we'll put it down in. I was just gonna say we could put a little dummy in it. Like, mannequin. <laughs> but if somebody does know of a place that we could store it for a year, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a warm, you know, somewhere that's sheltered. That's right. So it's something I'm thinking about. Gene had his hand up first. Okay, first Gene, uh, yeah. and then yeah, first I just, Gene and Paul. I just want to say I'm not sure I agree, Chris, that putting a vehicle in storage for a year is a good idea. Uh, the uh, the dam or the wear and the the vehicle will suffer from lack of use uh, and uh, be worth less a year from now than it is now. Now, I'm not saying go ahead and sell it this week, but I am saying that I think uh, we should consider uh, we're going to, if we're going to move to a different kind of arrangement, I think we need to think that that's going to be more likely permanent. And so I disagree. Okay. Duly noted. And Paul had his hand up after. Paul, do you have something? Well, yeah, kind of, kind of echoing Gene's sentiment, but I'm more concerned about the equipment. You've got thousands of dollars worth of equipment in there. Excuse me. So what's going to happen to that in the, the time that it's sitting? Can we do something with that equipment? Uh, it yeah, we plan value. on leaving. Yeah, we didn't plan on leaving like the laptop and a bunch of stuff in there. I, I haven't had a chance to talk to Oscar about it yet. This is just a conversation that Chris and I had off the, you know, outside of a select board meeting a couple of weeks ago or so. So I haven't even had a chance to talk to Oscar about that. I figured he would be able to be the one to give me good advice since he put it together. He could let us know what we could remove, what we couldn't, that sort of thing. And and um, you could leave it on the side of the fire station. That would That's certainly right. help slow traffic down. <laughs> well, down Joanne, Marshall, Joanne Marshall says we should put a dummy in it and move it around town so people think, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all for that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yep. I don't know if you remember or want to think back to 2020, but a lot of us had cars sitting for a long period of time. And you'll find the brake rotors will be basically worthless uh, in that time. Transmission could yeah. stick. So it's, there's just a lot of different things, especially if you leave it out in the weather. Right. And you don't get someplace dry. It's really good to have at least start it every now and again, keep the battery charged up. That's why we were talking about finding a sheltered area. Yeah, like a nice. We wouldn't leave it outside. But, but yeah. But. We're slapping the blisters. <laughs> well, just remember those new automobiles that you buy on the fancy dealership lots are have usually been sitting on a lot for over a year before you buy them. There's so there's not anymore. Not anymore. Well, I, I can tell you, but that's the way it works. So. Send that puppy yeah. in, and we had to pick it up the day it got there. Yeah. yeah. Well, just think about all the ones that are sitting there waiting for the chips right now, right? So, oh, um, all right. So we got to get moving along. We have a bunch more left here. Um, so I'm going to close the public comment and we're going to move forward. We have a, um, so put our cannabis control board hat on. We have 
um, uh, something wicked cannabis company to approve uh, to approve a retail permit. Yeah, so which we, we I mean for us is pretty much a rubber stamp. So it is. We cannot. We cannot. Um, we cannot say the location. Um, so that's part of the rules that the cannabis control board from the state sends down. But they are in compliance with all zoning regulations, and so there's nothing to stop you from approving it. I move to approve. Okay, yes. Dave. Second. Okay, okay question. Dave and Jean. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, which is so. I think I believe it was the state that was responding to you that was saying you can always like if there 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 were questions about the individual or the business that we could dig into that further and then what we were given doesn't include any information so exactly there's a disconnect from what the state's saying we are able to do and mm -hmm. what we're being given right what the state is now is saying is that we i mean we could i could have reached out directly to the person and i did that <clears throat> not with this application <clears throat> but with a prior mm -hmm. one where they had like a growing license but a small one really all you can really all you can do is <clears throat> make sure they're in compliance with the zoning regulations you, you can't do anything else so the applicant tells you right on the permit that they are in compliance with their with zoning which i know they are because i'm the zoning administrator so i think that what we thought originally would be the things we could do are, are no longer okay. the case we certainly have um you know if you get read the memo or the stuff from the cannabis control board directly you can't um does you can't do anything you have no authority here once it's the zoning was approved by the citizens to say that they would allow this then you that was it it kind of took that out of your hands the only way you could do anything would be to see if they didn't hear the zoning but they do and being this is the first one that we've done i'm just trying to think back on like the um on the alcohol and tobacco end of things when, when we get the alcohol and tobacco ones, does it tell where the retailer is located on those? Yeah, it does. But this so is, I guess I don't understand what the difference it, would be between them. Because I believe that Why this. We keep one a secret when it's a well, public retailer. I think because I, I was surprised that this one was because it's a retail space and they obviously will advertise. But right. the, the growing ones, it's for the protection of the owner. And that made sense for the growing ones, but for a retail space, it's a public space. Right. space and i think to chris's point similar to that. yeah alcohol mm -hmm. consumption and sale you're going to have the owner's names the business name and the location I know. why would this not but that's all it's all public that? information anyways like if someone it, it wanted just, to call the office it's it felt like a disconnect from what it's you were public information told. but i would not release the location i can't it tells you it's right on the no no but i'm location. saying that's like, the state law it, it's so it is weird i think I they did that. a blanket thing lindley i think they did a blanket no location for everybody and they didn't stop and think about it because okay. as legislatures like to say so they paint with, the whole <laughs> they paint with a broad brush you need to be adjusted and and yeah you know in a lot of ways maybe a little more equal if you're going to have one substance that's controlled and another substance that's controlled but they're operating by exactly uh, really different that it just yeah it, it felt agree. strange that the yeah. the state was giving you a certain set of advice that was then completely Different. opposite of what we were also being given. exactly no no okay. i know i appreciate keep, you explaining that because it felt with an updated you know uh information about it for can for local cannabis control boards and you can't you know you can't change your zoning you can't mm -hmm. do a tax on just that you would have to do a tiff district for everybody i mean right. there's basically they have given you the authority to create a cannabis control board which we did and they've given you no and authority yeah mm -hmm. no so that, basically that's your I job just, is yeah. to to rubber stamp or yeah, bless, and I, whatever they say. And that down. makes sense. I just don't understand why they're treating them. Different. I don't know either. I thought it was odd, the location, because obviously- And again, I see the growers us. versus the retailer. Right. Sense, but, yeah, yeah right. but I just don't yeah. think that they specified in the statute, so mm -hmm. they got to do. But I don't know. You're asking me to explain the state. Well, and that's, I just, if you had insight, that was beyond I don't, like, oh, I, weird. I don't. I had written to them before about the last permit because- they were giving them information. And then when I wrote to them, they referred me to their attorney. And then he wrote to me and said, oh, thank you for the catch. We're referencing the wrong statute in the letter. Um, gotcha. But this one had no, you know, was no issue. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just need a motion. Uh, so Dean, I think Jean, Dave moved and Jean seconded already. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. They're saying yes. Okay. 
<clears throat> so they uh, the license approved. I'll let the owner know tomorrow. Yeah. Are you leaving? Nope. We're trading spots. We had information in regards to. This is like a Chinese fire drill over here. What? So. Trying to. I don't know what they're doing. I'm just having a moment. Okay. So we just have the loan agreement for the Vermont State Revolving <laughs> Fund. Yep. So this is the approval for our phase two water project that we're going through right now. So it's 0% interest with a 2% administrative fee for 32 years. The general fund will pay 23% of this. That was our, that was our, uh, what we came out with to the voters originally when we passed the bond. 23% uh, is in the budget we're going to discuss next. So it's a two-parter. So you need a motion to authorize the chair to sign the loan agreement. And then you're going to need a second motion to approve the general authorization bond and resolution and certificate that the rest of you sign. So moved. Question. So, wait for the first one, Denise. Yeah. The motion authorized the chair. So is it Denise is a one and Lindley is a two? Okay. And you question. I have a question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question too. Uh, the twenty three percent. Do we think of that as like a copay? No, is that our share of the pro what, what's I don't understand that. The twenty three percent when we when we um, advertise the bond vote for the two point five million dollar project that we're doing right now, we had told the voters um, in the literature that we sent out that the town would that the general fund would pay the portion of the bond that would cover like road construction, pavement, et cetera, something that we would have normally paid for anyways. That way the whole enchilada didn't fall on water sewer users. So I had the engineer do that uh, number for us and it turned out to be 23%. So I um, that's how I came up with the number. Thank you. You're welcome. So you have a no, I'm good. motion and a second for the motion to chair for the chair to sign the loan agreement. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then you'll need a separate motion to approve the general authorization bond and resolution certificate that the three of you will sign that are present. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 So I have this, I have this tabbed up for you. So Okay. So you guys are the, so the red tabs are the select board, the green tabs are Pamela as the treasurer. And I think, and you're gonna be just one of the tabs is just you, Chris. Okay. Remember, even after you won't be on the board, Lindley, you still signed your life away. That's right. <laughs> that final signature yeah. in there. So you are the red tabs. Red tabs. Yeah. Very Christmas coordinated. That's right. You know what? I didn't even realize that till just now. That's funny. So in the interest of just kind of speeding through things, because we got behind a little bit. So that the next item um, for Dave and Jean that are remotely was we had talked about, we didn't really do anything last year, but two years ago, remember how we we did a survey to town to kind of see, you know, what are some things, either there were some things that we were mulling over at our our level or some other things that had been hot topics in town. And we've gotten, you know, pretty good feedback, I feel. Um, so I think this placeholder tonight was just for us as board members to start. What I'd like to do is if everybody could kind of start um, thinking about uh, well, I guess one, should we do another survey? And if so, what would be some of the topics that we'd want to put on that survey? And uh, between now and the next meeting, and then the next meeting will take that up kind of more of a, as a, a full item, not just a discussion piece. And um, does that sound pretty good? To... Yeah, I just put two items on there as a draft, but um, just to throw something yeah. on there. So feel free and, to- And I know some people have brought up to me already some things you know, some items that they would like to see might be, uh, once again, um, 
rediscussing the future plans at the rec facility. Thank you. Um, um, some other things have been about the, the town library, you know, the library in town. Um, so those are some things that some other people have brought up to me so far. So, um, but at the next meeting on the 18th next eight, week. Oh yeah. So well, that's not a lot of time then. So, okay, yeah. Um, so okay. we, we can go over that and, um, just email me your thought email. If you have a question, just email it to me and I can put it in the yeah. new draft. So it looks like I'm going to remove the one about, I'm definitely going to remove the one about parking because you guys have to make that decision yourselves this winter. So it kind of makes sense to get that done prior to possibly prior to town meeting. So, mm -hmm. but anyways, it was just a draft. We'd mentioned a survey. So I tried to make up some questions. So, or we might get here a week from now and say, we really don't have anything. Yeah. We don't want to do it. I'm no, so that's doing one, I guess. Yep. But, um, at least we can do that because we'll have to get that uh, get it going. printed up and stuff. So, yep. And um, it takes a while to put it through Survey Monkey to do online. So, so we have um, draft budget in hand. So, in, I don't know if you just want to ask if people have questions specifically instead of going line by line, but I'm happy to go line by line. For the I think, um, and you know, if anybody, if Dave or Gene, remotely or anybody in person i think what we'll do is we'll just go um uh, from a high view of you know the revenue high view and then the cost high view and then we can dive into a individual department sure um with any questions does that sound good okay so i'll let you start with revenue so the revenue is let me look over here um is only up 0.71 percent obviously it's you know, non-tax revenue is hard to come by. So I did increase, I worked with Dietrich on, since you approved the rec area, pass increases. And, and a lot of this, I just try to work on a two or three year average um, to see, you know, what rental fees are or something like that. So the overall local revenues were down a little bit. Town clerk fees are really hard to, you know, to know whether or not you're gonna have a lot of recordings or not. So um, I budgeted a 3% increase for highways for class one, two, or three. I don't know what now, what the state is currently thinking for an increase for state highways, but I just kind of put that in as a placeholder. So there's nothing really <clears throat> jarring or shattering that's going to come out that's changing in the revenue budget. So it's really just up 0.71%. So Sorry, we have to come up with some new non-tax revenue sources. Mm -hmm. So um, then overall, if you look at my proposed budget, if we flip on to expenses, um, my overall budget for expenses are up two point or excuse me, one point eight percent over last year. I have yet to talk to Rick Benson um because he is currently our assessor slash you know managing the lister office i feel that there are some zoning permits he perhaps has to see to increase some values but when i went to look at the grand list it's currently flat so i'm not expect i'm not <clears throat> i'm always hoping for some growth in the grand list but i don't know the answer to that i hope to see rick this week so i've included in this budget um there's a new vermont payroll tax that becomes in effect in july it's a child care contribution tax. It's 0.44%. Uh, the state law allows us to put 25% of that or 0.11% onto the employee, and we would take care of the rest. Um, obviously, you know that the budget also includes a increase in medical insurance, so that's in here. Um, I don't see a projected increase in uh, retirement, and I had had a higher price tag on that last year. So I actually reduced that a little bit this year. Um, in the road budget, I've kind of made some adjustments where less salt, more gravel, that type of thing. So some of those numbers are, we're kind of just moved around a little bit. I did increase our ERAF because we're going to have to pay off almost $12,000 of Pinello Bridge um, <clears throat> plus then start paying on our July, 2023 ERAF, which is, you know, 12, 0.5%. I just want to say we have not bid Pinello Bridge out yet. So my estimate on what we are, you know, going to be on the hook for for our ERAF for Pinello could change once the numbers come in. Hopefully it's less. Um so that's a change. 
there. Um, so the, the highway budget's obviously the biggest. The fire department budget is only up 0.85%. I met with the fire chief and the assistant fire chief. Uh, the constable budget, I added the $65,000 in contract services. I left 8,000 in for more solar signs. That is something you could take out if you wanted to. Um, also, in just in a thought, if you decided you wanted to sell the cruiser, there's money in the capital cruiser fund as well as the cruiser <clears throat> if you wanted to go to a higher end if you want to do more than the sixty five thousand, you could supplement for one year at least um so the recreation department um i put in a placeholder of ten thousand dollars last year they had wanted forty thousand dollars so that budget looks like it's down is down almost 30 percent because last year they wanted forty thousand dollars for the skate park but i don't think that's going to last time I read in their minutes was they didn't really have a next plan for their capital project. So that's down. Parks and public places, I have increased. That is, I'm budgeting. I put all in one so that I could manage easier. I'm requesting one full-time person year round to do all the mowing in the summer, to do all the building maintenance, which includes, you know, the, the gazebo, the fencing, the um, band shell, anything I need done at town hall, if I need the lights replaced, if I need this or that, because currently I also do the building maintenance unless I contract it out. So that person would also do sidewalks and work with the road crew in the winter time. Um, and they would, if Richard had a break in the summer time, like had a water main break, they would work with Richard, they would flush hydrants, that sort of thing. So um, so would that be taking mm -hmm. back some of the contracted work that we've had done, like mowing and ditching, and instead of having a contractor do that, this so not ditching. Well, ditching we've reduced anyways, okay. um, because we have done so much ditching in twenty, you know, after the flood. But and also this time, AJ and Morgan came to me and said, "Look, we'd like to rent a ditching, a bigger machine," and we worked out a way to do it by getting some grant money that we already had by doing a place piece on Dart Hill, and then we could rent the machine and they could do some other work as well to try to make more <clears throat> efficiencies there. But this definitely would take care of the mowing. I contracted out the mowing this year and <clears throat> excuse me, the guys did a great job, but I'm also paying them 65 or more an hour. So when I needed like fence work done or this and that, you know, yeah. Where was, I, I know I've seen it, but the, that contracted labor, would that be under public works? No, nope. I put concept? all of the work that I'm talking about under parks. No, 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 the, the way that we have had it in the past. So not this new proposal with a, a full-time person. What we did before, yeah, is we had the cost so that some of it went under public works, some of it went under parks, some of it went under water, some of it went so under sewer. It was and split across departments. It was, and because okay. I, for, for ease, honestly, for myself to ease instead of, divvying it up and I wouldn't charge any to water sewer I would just charge it to the general fund but the winter time would could come out of the highway but if the select board approves it I can make those changes but I didn't want to keep it's just it's time consuming to keep recalculating every percentage because it affects health insurance retirement so I thought if I threw it all in one one spot so I'm also going to make my pitch for this right now so let's keep in mind I'm the town manager I'm the zoning administrator I am the delinquent tax collector I do the building maintenance and I am the road commissioner. So the select board likes to say, you know, trees, you get stressed out. You've got a lot going on. I need help. And for me, help would be somebody who could manage the parks, manage some building maintenance. I mean, I was in here earlier taking light bulbs out so I can order them to get the right ones to come back to install some light bulbs. <laughs> and uh, Also too, if, you know, if we get the MERP, this grant for energy efficiency at the town office, if we qualify for that, it would give me somebody to oversee some of this and to be proactive. Like when we had Adam that summer, we were able to paint some fencing on Main Street. And now it's like if something happens, like the gazebo is vandalized, I have to call a contractor and get them to do it. Whereas if I had somebody down there every week mowing, they could, you know, take a look at this. I have some small work to be done at the fire station. And I just feel like if it's outside it could be good of their skill set, mm. they could be the general contractor. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. could find, like, do you know how long it took me to find someone to replace our repair our sign? 
you know, <laughs> because somebody from Christian Hill decided they were going to jump the curb and take out the town hall sign. Okay. So that's what's all in one budget right now. It's a full-time person year round. Um, so that's in there. Municipal office. The only thing that really changed there is since Vitri will no longer be the pool director, absorb some of her hours in house. Um, that's really all that changed there. Town hall is like a reallocation of insurance. Their insurance went up. So I'm looking at that number again between now and next week. Um, town officials say it stayed similar. The listers, um, I've talked to Rick Benson about this and I've talked to someone to contract assessing work with, possibly Nemric. They're the ones who are doing our townwide reappraisal. Um, our recommendation is that we remove the office of listers, that we hire someone to work in the office 16 hours a week. They won't do any of the valuation. They will just do all of the paperwork, the PTTRs, et cetera. We will have an assessor. I'll budget for four hours a month at $95 an hour because that's what the fee was I got from Nemeric. It's still cheaper. It still drops the budget overall for the listers. Then we have somebody coming in outside of Bethel <clears throat> that is a professional assessor that is valuing properties um, according to those rules. I also think it'll be nice because if you bring in a professional, they're going to be taking over from a professional. We will have just had a townwide reappraisal. So by doing that, it actually drops the lister budget by 13.65%. And it also allows us to open those positions up. So we now we can look for people outside of Bethel that have the abilities you want. You may even get somebody that works as a lister in another town that is familiar with VT Pi, that's familiar with Nemeric, familiar with Cama, that may be just looking for some office hours and you know, we could benefit from that. Um do we have to have a separate uh, um, item on the warning yeah. for the listers piece? We will, yep. And then government operations are up, you know, 5%. That's just a combination of, of stuff. Uh, appropriations, we have the numbers in here so far that we or that we received from the Human Services Committee. And you can tell if I've received a letter for somebody about their dues. That's in here. Um, under debt service, I added the DWS RF piece, which is the 20... 3%, that's $13,940. So overall with the budget and the increasing in the capital equipment fund, increasing the appropriation to capital building funds, increasing the appropriation of the capital highway funds, um, my budget, uh, my proposed first round out is up 1.80% in, in um, expenses. So I'm looking at an overall, um, uh, a 2.1 percent increase over last year um in the budget and i know we obviously always try to stay under three percent so for my first stab i feel pretty good about it <laughs> so so we'll see so that's the quick and dirty version so that's gene kraus has his hand raised so that's like two two point four cents yep Go ahead, Gene. So I, I I looked, but I did not see any uh, any suggestion for the interregional energy coordinator uh, request nope. that came in last time. Um, and I'm encouraging or suggesting that we either include it in the budget or as a special item warning uh the uh town of rochester is going to have it as a special item in their town meeting there are other communities that have voted to go ahead the only thing that's in the budget is the same thing that was in the budget last year we have that contract labor line under the town manager's office it was at fifteen thousand last year um only use 3,700 of it because I had I was contracting with Two Rivers to work with the Planning Commission, and I'll use a little bit more of it. So I did drop that to $10,000. So there is $10,000 in the budget under contract labor, um, you know, for grant writing, grant assistance, whatever. Um, kind of, we kind of had gotten to that point last year, so <clears throat> that I left that number in there and figured you all would 
have a discussion about that. So if we were to add uh, this coordinator at uh, $12,000 for the first year, um, we're in a ballpark with that line, line in it. You are, yeah. Especially, especially if we were to go up to 15 or even 20 so that we have a few dollars for the town in addition. So I, I'm just suggesting that that's, uh, that we might want to uh, add that in. So I put it in at 10 because, you know, I was always looking for money. So right. I was looking, so that's, so there is a $10,000 in there and we've used it the last couple of years to cover, a, you know, if we needed grant writing, I think last year you'd even talked about the possibilities. You were seeing where this was going to go with energy. And then, uh, like I said, I've only used some of the money to pay two rivers, um, to work with Eric Webb and myself and others um, for the planning commission. Um, I think this is a good moment. Um, I sat with a lot of what we talked about in the last meeting around the energy coordinator position. Um, and I, I think in a lot of ways, we as a board very specifically and very clearly tasked, tasked the energy committee with doing the research and coming back and they have done that. And so uh, sort of to Jean's point, it it is now on us to do the due diligence of considering that. And so I think it should be in consideration within this budget, whether or not it's included. And if it's not going to be in this budget, it should by all rights go to the voters. Um, because I think this is sort of the bigger scope of the questions are not just within our town, it's state mandates. We're acknowledging every single meeting and uptick in catastrophic natural events. We're discussing increased costs of energies. We're discussing that within this own budget. And this position is directly and quantifiably going to help towns address those exact issues. We can't quantify how much or you know, to what degree, but we know that we're continuing to see this uptick. We're continuing to see the bills from these issues. And if we wanna get ahead of it and be proactive, and I think it also even though there's no guarantee, it opens us up for avenues of funding, just like you were saying with the energy efficiency on the town offices. It's like that kind of stuff. The more proactive Bethel is on the outset, the more amenable funding agencies are to these things. And so I think by putting that task out there to the energy committee, the energy committee in conjunction with Two Rivers did their due diligence for a couple of years now. And you know, it, it behooves us to at a minimum put it into the consideration and have this conversation. Um, I think the piece that really stuck with me was just kind of trying to wrap my own brain around these thoughts. I, I ended up talking with a couple different entities. And when I, when I said, you know, I, I don't really know where the board is landing with this, it doesn't actually feel like we would be leaning right now in the direction of saying yes to this. They said, well, then can it go to the voters because we would want to see it as a ballot item. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if the board is ultimately going to say no to it in the budget, then we owe it to our citizens to put it up to them to make this decision. I think by having 10,000, I spoke to Two Rivers directly, and they're bringing somebody else on and that they're going to start gearing up to do part-time um, to do some more work that we could do. We could also contract with them if Bethel had a specific need um, that they, we could also reach out to Two Rivers. Obviously, we're dealing with Harry right now, and um, but they're already, they're they're kind of staffing up um, to take on some things. I think it's hard for us because you don't know what you're getting. It's hard to quantify to the voters because we don't even know what our need is. Whereas we are going to start working, hopefully, um, sounds like we'll have this discussion Thursday night with the planning commission, which is trying to land another planning grant, uh, to go through the start work on the a full redo or full review of the town plan. And I'm wondering if, once that review of the town plan is done and we do it in conjunction with two rivers, is that going to give us more of a concrete list of things that we need to work on? I, mean, I don't know. I'm just asking. Cause to me, it's a, it's hard for me to quantify if someone was saying, what are you going to get for this money? I can't tell them, which is, you know, it's very difficult for me. But I think it's, I, and this is one of the ways that I wrap my brain around this. So if somebody were to say, well, why are you doing accessibility and pedestrian studies in your downtown? We know that there's no payback 
the payback right. is the safety of our families, our children, our loved ones. Absolutely. Right. And so is this realistically any different? We don't know a quantifiable number, but that doesn't mean we can't support it in an understanding that there is a, a bigger and better potential out there for mm -hmm. what it can do for us. And I think that can be, and this is where I say, like, it really is from, from the top down. It's, it's in our own town plan currently mm -hmm. that we will work towards ener energy efficiency. Sure. Um, it's mandated from the state. And while I don't, I'm not going to profess to understand what the state mandates are and all the, no. the trickle downs, the reality is it's it's there and we get those report cards once a year and they're dismal. Right. And like it, it it's almost it's almost pitiful to look at them and know that we could be doing better, but we're not actually even making an effort at the moment to do better. And so this to me would be a way to start to figure out how to do better. Cause I think none of us on the board have a clue as to how to do better. Yeah. We need an expert to come in and say, here's what makes it that quantifiable number that next year we can justify it to the taxpayers because we now have an expert coming in and helping us understand what's what's achievable for us, what's accessible for the individual citizen. Because I, I think of this, I mean, at least the way I read it was this coordinator position isn't just only for municipalities. It, it has the trickle down effect to the individual citizen to help them sort of sort out what what's accessible to them, what's well, available. Yeah, then I guess maybe somebody else could clarify that because my impression was it was just for the buildings that we own. But I do want to say say this, and I kind of came to me today in a conversation with someone was, I I want the select board to think about and be proud about the work that we have done. Every time we did, we did this $2.8 million water project, we're doing this $2.5 million water project now. Every time we do that, we are saving resources. We're saving water. We're saving energy. We're making our systems more efficient. And, and we're allowing, we're giving our citizens better water, better. So every time we do these projects, um, you know, I, I, don't, I feel like people keep saying, well, we haven't done anything. We have done things. Every time we buy better highway equipment, it's probably, it's better fuel. It's less it's less hydraulic, it's less oil. So I do feel like in the last, I mean, I can only speak for the last four plus years that I've been here, let us not discount the work we have done because those $2.8 million projects and a 2.5, that's a lot that we have done for the planet, for our own you know, community and resources. And we already have partnered with Green Mountain Power to try to do this big push for them to make you know, the resiliency within the grid, and they're going to do more work too. But I did write to Two Rivers as promised after the last select board meeting and <clears throat> got a message back from Harry. And he sent me on to somebody else to find out what that other consortium or whatever was doing. And I have not heard anything back from him because I did write them and say, hey, we're kind of talking about this issue. Can you tell us what you have done? What have you accomplished? Have you gotten a payback or you know, my biggest fear is that we have somebody come and their priority number one is, and you know this better than anybody, is that you've seen it, people writing grants to keep their own job first. Whereas if we add $10,000 or so to the budget, then we could reach out to Two Rivers for specific needs as we felt we had them. But it's hard for me because I, when we get those report cards, they are dismal. But one of them is electric cars. You and I aren't doing a dang thing about electric cars. That's going to be the state issuing more tax credits, more. We can't get people, you and me ain't getting people to buy electric vehicles. So some of it, I feel like when they judge us is unfair because they're not looking at the work that we have done since we came here, obviously, or since, you know, sure. since we've started tackling all of our infrastructure issues and all the stuff that we've beefed up. And yes, we've well, had floods, think, we I mean, advantage we, of it. All but. the work that we did at the town office. I mean, I we, did we changed out. I mean, yeah. Dave will contest it. We changed out all the lights to LED lights yep. in town. I mean, there's there's a lot of things. I mean, they're not flashy that the report no, card no. picks up. I'm not saying we haven't but, done it. No, I, you know, I'm also saying I think that this is a bigger, it's a bigger more. systemic issue, and it's not yeah. just a state level and not just a town level or an individual level, but it's actually the partnership of all of them. And I think the, the big thing for me was that we taxed our energy committee with this task and they did it. They mm -hmm. came back to us with info and for us not to give it sincere consideration and have these discussions as part of our budget discussions is a bit of a slap in the face to them. It was multiple years of work. Mm -hmm. 
under a, a directive from us. Yeah, <laughs> so I think sure. that for me was the piece of like, yeah, we we need to give this due consideration. Right. Um, and if we don't feel it fits in the budget, I think we owe it to the citizens to give them the ability to consider this and say, actually, we we believe this is worth the extra, you know, what, 75% of a cent. Um, yeah. Or no, we don't. And we'd rather see that money go to X, yeah. Y, or Z. Right. And so I, I just wanted to vocalize that, like, I, you know, I know, I know that you, mm -hmm. you think about these numbers so deeply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not it's lost. Not on. <laughs> it's not, but I really appreciate the way that you worded it. And, and like I said, I was having a conversation with someone today and I'm like, man, I'm sick of the select board being the bad people because you have done so much mm -hmm. that you deserve a little pat on the back for all the work that you have done. And that, you know, while we talk about energy, when and, we talk about yeah. water and all the other things that we're not pumping out of the ground not to and mention, coordinating. So. I mean, think about all the resiliency projects that we've been doing. Like right. when, well, I, got on, when I got on this board, I mean, our, gra our gravel <laughs> budget was basically nothing. We didn't have a ditching budget. We didn't ditch roads. I mean, so we, and, and granted, those aren't gonna show up in the fancy state of Vermont's report card for us right but there are a lot of things that we have been doing you know well and they're going to show up in the the not having the expenses from major flooding events right right, it, right. they're going to exactly. show up in ways of saving not in right. what money we make back and i think that was sort of last time our discussion got so focused on what do we get out of this and i think sometimes it's not quantifiable things mm -hmm. it's not what the state tracks and just exactly to your points of like there are all these things mm -hmm. we do that don't get considered. Yeah, I mean, it would, yeah. it would be sort of silly and blindsided of the board to say, well, if there's no direct payback, then it's not worth our investment. Because I think your point of, you know, doing additional ditching, upsizing mm -hmm. culverts when we can afford to, you right. know, those right. are the proactive yeah. thinking things. And I think as a board, we have right. been actually really good at being proactive thinkers. And it just felt, it just felt incongruous with some things, the, the way the discussion went last time. And I sort of, it took me a bit to wrap my brain around it all. So I just, yeah. wanted to say something. So I, I think for me, the clarification is, and, and Jean can certainly explain this, was my impression the whole time has been that the energy coordinator's number one focus is on town-owned buildings. Obviously, we're all in favor of window dressers and any sort of thing like that that comes in that helps the, the, the uh, resident. But so Jean, is that incorrect thinking on my part that the energy coordinator's main position would be to focus on town owned buildings. Am I wrong in mm. that? I could be. No. It's, well, there are two, two things that I would say to that specifically. Uh, one is that this position is not limited to the town as a town. Okay. It is in. It is also involving education and involve uh, making resources available to individual citizens, so that they can do what they can do as citizens to uh, winter weatherize, uh, put in air pumps, and so on and so forth. Sometimes that's simply making resources available and publishing that in a way that the citizens uh, themselves can take advantage. Uh, uh, so it's not just, an, and even as a town, it's not just town buildings. It's energy writ large. So we, we have energy that is not related to heating our buildings. We have energy in terms of all of the equipment that we use and, and so on. Third thing that I would say is that the committee that would put this together uh, spent a great deal of time talking with Harry at Two Rivers and trying to decide, in fact, whether or not log tying this into Two Rivers under Two Rivers model was appropriate. Uh, what I just said uh, about involving individual citizens is not in the two rivers of uh, bailiwick there uh is what 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 we heard from harry and that was checked with peter gregory uh the was that we are looking as much for a community organizer as we are for a grant writer 
This is not simply somebody to write grants for us, but it is someone to uh, to work with volunteers, to support uh, volunteer efforts, to reach out to the citizens, in addition to helping the towns themselves. Uh, and all, every one of these towns has done has taken steps to uh, enhance or to deal with the rising energy costs and and to uh, address climate change, whether it's been you know open or and and advertised as such or not. But the question is whether or not we are. So this particular person was specifically designed to supplement what we are doing through Two Rivers, not to replace it, but, but to add some components that Two Rivers simply does not do. Uh, and so I hope that's clear. Um, that is. Thank you. So what I'm thinking then is this, if, if the you have a $4,000 MERP grant mm -hmm. that's sitting in there that could be go to this, and then with the ten thousand dollars in labor, there's fourteen grand to cover it. So I guess what you could do, if you chose to do, if you had three select board members to support it, you could put it to the voters. I guess for the twelve thousand three hundred sixty dollars, knowing that you have ten in contract labor and the four thousand dollar MERP grant to cover it. The four thousand dollar MERP grant is part of what makes that first year twelve thousand dollars. Okay, is so that, I need twelve. Okay, is, so, that, oh, so well, that thought, that enables us to, to consider. Okay. It, I it, it drops down the more people that commit to it. Denise oh, was what the right. what the more people that sign up. So okay, so basically it would have been sixteen thousand, but the four for the MERP. So we're about twelve thousand three sixty short. Okay. I, I thought I, I had something there, Gene. Twelve could be eighty. Well, I wish you did, <laughs> but that was that was part of the thinking. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Minimum, All right. We're saying yes to this year, right? Just like those other towns could drop out, we could also choose to drop out. You could. And right. So yeah. I, I think that's not a was... that's not a logical argument to say no to one year because it could go up next year. Yeah. Like, I just don't. I, 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 have I, a hard time buying. I like your I like your thinking. <laughs> just like climate. Just because it goes up one year doesn't mean it's going down. That's right. right. So the um so there is 10 in contract and um anyways, so okay. So well, there's we there's something beat the horse on this one. So there's <clears throat> something to think about, anyways, that, that there is 10 in the budget and Jean's four uh for the MERP. So so you just would you would be looking for two grand extra. So so, I, so anyways, that was just a high overview of the budget. So so I, I think some things that we have correction, to correction, a correction. We yeah. cannot consider the MERP twice. The no, I know. Lower the lower figure of twelve thousand for the first year is because it is a pilot project funded in part by the communities that have uh that are dedicating their four thousand dollars towards this. Right. That yeah. So we so we would need so this program needs an additional, was it twelve thousand? Well, somewhere. if there's ten thousand, if there's ten thousand in the budget under contract labor, yeah. you'd be looking for an additional two thousand three hundred and sixty, right. I think, right? Right. Yeah. If okay. yeah, if if that's how the if that's how the select board wanted to do it within the budget. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. And hopefully we have less on the docket for next week. So we'll be able to push the budget up higher up the, yeah, I don't, I don't know if anything else on the agenda for next week off the top of my head. So hopefully it can be mainly just solely a budget um, meeting. We won't have the sheriff here for an hour. So. Can I ask you a different question? Of course. It's not energy related. Yes. Um, <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Under the fire department. Yep. There was almost five thousand dollars this year in dispatch. Yep. And nothing budgeted. Can right. you explain that? Sure. 
Um, it comes up every couple of years. I feel like they change the person in charge at the state level for the D Department of Public Safety. And every once in a while, I've, I've been through this multiple times in the last 18 years, they talk about, we're gonna, you gotta pay to dispatch the fire department. You're gonna pay to dispatch the fire department. So Dave and I go through and do our due diligence. We get a letter and we budget it and then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And a new person just came in. So we have, we didn't get any paperwork. So we'd agreed that this year we weren't gonna budge anything for dispatching because if they even came in to do it now, it wouldn't take, they wouldn't make it take effect in our next budget year. Gotcha. But so we've, have we actually, we've spent the no. 4,800. We've was, never, isn't that under actual? we've never, oh, then it's in the wrong line. Okay. Ah, sorry. Okay. So I'll move that. So we have never, uh, 4,891. So that's what was budgeted. It's yeah. just in the wrong category. That, that's that explains it. Well, okay, it, sorry, it, let me it look. seemed very strange that we'd spent almost $5,000 oh, this actual, year. Oh, actual. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'll move that. I'll take a little budget. arrow. Thank okay, you. Cool. Cause yeah, we, we haven't spent any and, and we won't budget it this year either. So I'll make a note. Thank you. You get typing away, you know, and you, I know. I mean, I also think it should be said that you, you do a stellar job with this oh, to nice. the point that we're able to just come in and have productive discussions and make decisions. I mean, the fact that we're able to do this in December and I'm not stressed out about it because I know, yeah. I know you've done a great job. Oh, thank so it's, yeah. thank you, Therese. What did you pay me for? So I that guess. and so much more. Yeah. But um, so yeah, so there's a, a high overview. Dave, did you have a question? I know I was going to make you a copy because I know you like it on legal size paper, but I can make you one if you want to pick it up. Um, no, I'm totally pick it up. I'm good. Okay. Well, I, I will, uh, I will talk considerably more hopefully next time because I will be there. Uh, there you go. And, um, but I will make you a bigger copy for, um, so you think you're going to come in person next week? And, and God willing. And the doctor said it's okay. God willing, and the creek don't rise, you'll be, I'll make sure um, I make you a bigger copy. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. That's my, that's my plan as well, hopefully. Okay, yes, absolutely. Okay. So, so I think one thing, just kind of looking at the budget on a high level, that we have to be careful of, because we're getting away from this quick, is is we we currently are spending we're on year two of our five year spending of the extra monies from the transfer station yep so remember at some three years down the road that money is yeah. going to dry up and that's that's about two cents on the tax rate that either we have to cut yep or yep. we have to fund that's right so it, and and from what i keep seeing it we're just we're adding layers to this thing so um, so even though the budget's only up right now on this draft, $51,000, which is 2.4 cents, you have to understand that we're still carrying that 54 in there. So our, really our two, yep. two, two and a half cents is really four and a half cents when we start thinking out a couple years from now. Absolutely. And, and we also have in this budget, because remember last year we had a proposed budget and our proposed budget carried pretty much what we normally see for increases yep but then at town meeting day there was a bunch of bolt-ons that got added to this thing and we are still carrying some of those in this too we are. so so our budget is is it in theory is is way more up than the 2.4 cents because we're still even though the recreation department last year we added thirty thousand extra for the skate park yeah that's been down that's back down to 10 but we're still carrying the increased funds for the library that we still 27,500, which they had promised us that they would do a now we planning. would, we would see a long-term planning of what are we doing with the library? Cause, cause when we had the discussion last year at this time, a, we were told that a library of, of this town size should have a funding of around $125,000 to $150,000 to be a, you know, efficient library for all of us to use the tools. And we're still funding this thing on a shoestring budget. Mm -hmm. And I think we, as board members, correct me if I'm wrong, but last year we had said, you know, because they were basically saying, well, hey, we're going to close our doors here in like two years, right? And we said, well, what do you need to 
bare minimum float this thing until you figure out what the long term plan is. And and so we added the twenty two thousand seven fifty or whatever it was. And here we are. We've 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 mm -hmm. increased our budget for that, and we have gotten nothing from them. I just got a letter. You know, so today. it it's, it just feels like to me that we're just. And I would love to see a library in a town, but it just feels like we're just throwing cash at this library that probably still closing in two years because they haven't figured out what they're doing yet. I will say I got a letter today from the library that obviously didn't make it in your packet, but we'll go in your packet next time because your packet was already out. And there they did say, and there they outlined some of the stuff they had done, but did say clearly that because I reminded them in an email that they had promised us long range planning. And they said, oh, they're gonna tackle that in 2024. So they still want their additional 27,500. So their whole ask is still 35,000. And you're right, we did add $30,000 last year for the skate park. And then just to back up, I mean, yeah. only, I don't know, three years ago, we were funding the library at $5,500. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and here we are, we, we have, we increased it both in our budget, but then a bolt on at um, town meeting day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now we're funding, funding this thing seven times what we were two years ago. Right. With no clue what the future looks like. Right. So I guess that really concerns good, me. Good for us. <clears throat> and, and what do we get for? We get a library that continues to serve the people. Right. We're just talking, doll, doll. we're just trying to quantify how the budget has gone from one point to another, Gene. So I'm a huge library fan we, myself. I, under, I understand, but we are the, ultimately the, the town is a service provider for the community. It is not a business. So we have to pay. So what we are getting for all of our tax dollars, our services provided to the town, whether it's in the form of water or sewers or roads or whatever. Uh, so I think that I just want to say that I think that these are, uh, yes, these are expenses that we have agreed to take on. And I say, good for us. That's what the town voted a year ago. Well, I, I think that's I guess my argument said. on not said. Mm -hmm. I guess my argument on that is exactly what I just said five minutes ago, is that we are being underserviced with our library in town. They they sat here and told us that a fully functional library for our town size should be one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year, and right now they are funding this on a shoestring budget, which is not adequately giving us the services that our town deserves. And we are right now blindly throwing money at something that we don't know what the long-term plan is there. And, and last year, the whole reason why we gave them the money was for, for the people of the town and for them to figure out what is the long-term focus of that building? Is it mm -hmm. because it's not a town library. So anybody that thinks it's a town library, it's not a town library. It, it has no other than we give funding for the library. It's mm -hmm. not a town library. So, so either they need to find what does the path look like to, to be a fully functional library, which might be asking the town people to give $125,000 a year, but we're still just kind of, it's limping along. We're just throwing cash at this thing. And and, and long-term, it's it's a problem. And in, in three years from now, we, we are going to, you know, whatever, maybe I won't be here at the time and I can sit there and say, I told you so. But in three years from now, all these things that we keep kicking down the can, we're going to have to pay for. It. Yeah, that's true. So, and if we don't start making these, I don't want to say cuts or decisions now, you know, if we keep increasing this and, you know, we're, because we basically said, hey, we know that our budget's increasing, but we have these short term funds that we're going to kind of plug the hole for now. Well, when the short term funds, state of Vermont with right. everything else, yeah. you know, the day of reckoning is coming and three years from now, we're either going to have to keep our services to our community at this, or we're going to have to ask, you know, that you're going to have to chip in another two, two and a half cents that nobody yeah. seems to have right now. Right. Well, so, and I think that's a, a point to be made while well, Gene is correct that, that yes, we're a municipality and yes, we provide services um, to people. I think that we also, we can only provide services to the level in which our, 
and which our residents can afford it. You know, so if you're living on social security or a very fixed income, <clears throat> it's hard to keep giving everybody everything. Um, if we, because I always feel really bad when I have residents that are, you know, retirees that are living on such a fixed income and then the taxes go up, then, you know, maybe or maybe not, they qualify for an increased prebate, but then somebody is paying for that. Somebody who is paying the full boat of their taxes is now helping to pay more for the state level to, you know, because you're paying for somebody else's prebate. So it just becomes... Yes, I agree with Jean that we do provide services, but I also agree that we have to be um, very cognizant of our lowest income residents and what they can, I don't want to price anybody out of town, you know, certainly. So there's but, always I mean, that fine line. And, and this it's year's tough. budget, I mean, we really got to really look at everything in a perspective of the Yeah. It's going to get thrown at us at the local level. Sure. But there has been a lot of things that have gone on for the last two or three years that weren't settled that we're going to start paying for. You know, and the governor had put it out there last week about a potential of upwards to 20% increases in property taxes. Yeah, because of the school. And, and that is a that is completely a... Uh, Instead, you know, the, the state used COVID funds to plug holes mm -hmm. instead of addressing how do we fix education costs? How do we fix the retirement? Right. How do we fix Medicaid? Mm -hmm. And they punted that. They used the COVID funds, plugged the holes, and now they're here in this deficit. Mm -hmm. So the only only thing that they can do, like Gene said, is they can keep the level of services that people want. Yeah. But now it's time to pay the piper, right? right. Or they're going to have to cut services, which we all know that they're not going to cut. So right. And what happens is these decisions are made easily in Montpelier because it always becomes our problem down below. Right. Absolutely. So it becomes the school's problem when the when the yield goes sky high this year. Mm -hmm. um, and it becomes our problem here in the town, right? Because right. we're trying to right. keep our level of services, but now we, we're having to increase taxes. Mm -hmm. What do you think the, do you have any prediction on what the school tax is going to do this year? I know that the school board it's, is working it's, on it. We're so early in it. The three things, well, the school is made up of three different identities. So you have the common level of appraisals, which right. continue to go down. So that yeah. negatively impacts your budget. Yeah. And then you have the yield, which the yield is basically after the state gets done, kind of balancing their budget they they set the yield and the yield then is up to the towns to you know up to the schools well like for instance the yield's going to go down this year um uh, for a lot of different reasons one of bits that they are going to fully fund um the food programs at school okay mm -hmm. but that 35 million dollars needs to be paid somehow right right so that it just you know it weighs down the yield that and a bunch of other things so the yield is going to significantly go down this year as well. The only thing that the school has going for it is there's a whole new funding um, formula that the state has enacted that that's going to increase, at least in our area, um, the funds that um, or how we pay for students. Right. Because you said they were they there used to be we paid by per pupil spending and there but in the town was penalized if you went over per pupil price. Yeah. But now they're removing the per pupil price penalty yeah. say that three times fast per yeah. people price penalty so it, so the schools have how much do you think their tax is going to go up uh, i don't know we uh, i might know a little bit better at this next one but it, it, again they have ch similar challenges that yeah. um well there's a lot of fun a lot of programming either at the superintendent's level or the school level that has been funded with covid funds over the last three years as well right yeah. so now that you know that has dried up so it's do you want that same level of service or do you yeah. not want that same level of service? Or maybe they were paying for two of these people, but now they're only going to pay for one, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I guess we were lot. lucky. We didn't get any COVID funding. And, so and, I and, guess we get a lot of And I think, <laughs> I think the governor, you know, probably threw out the biggest scare tactic he could, sure. 20%. I don't think it'll be 20%, but there's, you know, a significant increase is coming mm -hmm. to everybody. Absolutely. Um, but I just think, you know, here we just have to start thinking about, you know, three years from now, I mean, we, we, we've said two years now, but, you know, we're going to have to come up with that revenue that we're going to miss out on. Yep. Um, that's, 
that argument that is arguing for the the for like this energy position to take it to the voters uh like we took the library to the voters uh it wasn't a select board decision to fund that that was a voter decision uh i would uh, argue that uh that that's a that it's appropriate when you're quote adding a service that you ask the voters if that's what they want to do uh but yeah, we are all concerned about the costs. We are all concerned about keeping down the costs. And hopefully that's one of the things that will result from uh, some of these programs that we're trying to provide. I, I understand what you're saying, Gene, but I, I respectfully disagree in the sense that you know, the select board's job is to present, obviously, to present a responsible budget. And last year, for example, we proposed a budget, which I felt very much was responsible. And then the voters, you're right, added on money for the library, money for, you know, skate park, money for this, money for that. Um, and there was not a single question asked, not a single question asked on that budget at all. And I, I find that unnerving and, and I don't mean any disrespect but I feel like I, we're not saving somebody from themselves because I'm not standing there with an old-fashioned mimeograph machine reeling off their tax bills right there so I think that people have really big hearts and they want to do all these things but when it comes August 15th November 15th and we're in the office taking tax payments um it, it's difficult because we not only collect municipal tax we collect school tax so it's hard when you see someone coming in who's really scraping together their last penny and i think that people don't always understand that when they're standing at town meeting in march because they're not going to see that bill until july and they're not actually they're thinking oh it's a this on a tax rate or that on the tax rate so i just think that sometimes maybe it's too easy to kick it to the voters because when have they denied you? You know what I mean? I mean, and I'm just, this is more like a philosophical question, Gene, but uh, it's just something that I personally struggle with. That's all. So I had a couple of just okay questions in the budget quickly. So the gravel, we have, there's $35,000 yeah. in increase in gravel year over the year. What, what is that? So I took, piece of it. Oops, hang on a second. To that, that seems like a, so I took, I reduced my, salt budget mm -hmm. and i added the diff i added money into the gravel budget i'm just need a ruler and um because and and let me see i don't think i think i level funded sand hang on and i added okay i added money from salt to sand but we have places in town that everybody knows where we have graded the road to a nub so I level funded chloride and I added, there was savings of $30,000 in salt and I added that um, to gravel. So the money from salt went to gravel and I level funded chloride. So that's really what I did there. Um, you see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, I'm just kind of going back, you know. Yeah. You know, not so many years yeah. ago, our gravel budget was... Fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a year. And right. Now, but last when, year it was at its peak of fifty, and now we're eighty-five. So well, because to... I was trying to move salt into gravel, because I mean, look at we can do a very good example would be um, pea vine. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just so, roads that we have not put any material on, and I think Dave, I'm sure, knows of multiple spots where we have just graded the thing to bedrock, and it needs material on it. Now, yes, I've picked up as much grant money as I can, and we can do. Uh, hydrologically connected segments but if we have a piece of road that's not near a river then we're going to eat that out of pocket so it was just a like i said first stab at the budget so it was just a thought and i know currently we're at did it's did did we not also change the quality of the gravel we changed, uh, changed the quality of the sand okay so but there was uh, a cost increase related to that was there not 
Yeah, they're seven percent increase for most materials this All year. Right, so, so yeah, and there was okay. an increase because we switched sand last year from regular to manufactured. Right. Okay. And I would assume that some of the seventy-one thousand that's been spent to date has got to be some FEMA. It is stuff. And yeah, and I haven't made the. Can't imagine that we've done. No. Oh, so some of that actual for this year will come off of there. Yes, oh, it's yeah. going to get moved. I, I just yeah. haven't. We were just. I just had to pay it that way. And then I increased guardrail because we do have sections of specifically of Camp Brook Road that need to be done. Obviously, if you have any ends, those are a huge priority. And and guardrail pricing has gone insane. So um, I did increase that budget. I noticed the fire insurance went up quite a bit. I mean, quite a bit as in percentage wise, it went up $5,000. Is that a. Yep. It's, well, they bought a new, they bought a, their rescue truck now. And so now they have two rescues. They haven't sold one and um, just, you know, insurance price and increase, but what is this? highway rehabilitation? That's like a capital road fund. Okay. So you're, you put an extra 20,000 into that. I did because the good thing about that is we can use that for matching funds um, also too, I want to work on our capital. We need to do a capital road plan. And I was just talking to Chris, um, once he has a little more free time, I, I have an extra map and I want him to come in and so that we can highlight in one color, everything we did in 2019, and then highlight in another color, everything we did in 2023, so that we can build a capital road plan based on, okay, what haven't we touched mm -hmm. and where I know this summer, where we're going to do, um, some work on um dart with a um grant that i already have secured mm -hmm. so part of that is sorting that out so, so this this line item is different from a capital fund where it would it would roll over like if we're if we're looking to invest in a new grader right we put something into a capital mm -hmm. fund and, and we can build that resource and that's and exactly what it. this is this is a capital okay fund. this is the same okay yes that's yep. what i was trying to sort out in my brain was is, yep. is this part of a capital fund so if we don't spend the full you know, 175. Yeah, it rolls over. This year, it rolls into, okay. Yeah. Yep. So, and some of that really is to try to get the peaks and valleys. Right. You know. Right. right. Yeah. So there is some, you know, and maybe I can cut back on my culvert budget because we just did a bunch of culverts. So again, I think what's going to help me is having a conversation, you know, going through with Chris and sitting back and saying, okay, look, these are all the places we did culverts in 2019. Here's all the places we did culverts in 2023. So maybe I can dial some money back there. But, you know, when you're going through it, obviously the highway budget is the biggest budget. So I always find that they also have the biggest need. And I will say they told me they wanted an increase in tools to like 6,000. I added another five just because at my first go around, I was only at 0.48%. Mm -hmm. So then I doubled back through the budget. And I'm like, okay, I want to put more money in capital funds and I need to put more money into like gravel and into some road stuff. So mm -hmm. those are obviously the biggest complaints. Is the roads. The, um, and I'm just kind of rifling through some of these. Um, the, so now that the state has passed down the, mm -hmm. uh, reappraisal timeline mm -hmm. again yep so how much money do we have to put aside for our portion of the reappraisal and now that they're saying what every six or seven years yep. you gotta have it now mm -hmm. so is that is that eight thousand dollars we have in there is that going to cover us yes. if we do it on a cycle of six seven years yep and i'll make a note here to give okay. you that but yeah because i had i believe that i believe so off the top of my head so let me make a note next to that to look at my capital plan um right. because um where is that um it's is it government uh, operation oh here it is reappraisal that. okay yeah. so i'm gonna say print out capital schedule so i believe that it is but i could be wrong it's, i have to go back i usually do the budget and then double back into my sometimes right. back into the capital but and, but that's what i had in the schedule and then just kind of looking at this it inspired another conversation of probably It'd be nice if the rec, if we could get the rec committee to talk to us in regards to what their vision yep. is for the next phases, because they currently rather than just arbitrarily give them ten thousand dollars, like what right. is the next piece and how long are we out on that? Like if if they say our next piece is two years away and we need fifty thousand dollars, then maybe we should think about twenty or twenty five or you know or right. mm -hmm. or or add some money to the well. If you read the their or, their most re recent rec committee meeting minutes say that they have no project. Oh, well, I know, but there's still yeah. stuff on the plan. You know? I know, but I don't know. So, That's why they, I think and it we might need fun. to do a survey. 
maybe I'm recalling this not from a select board meeting, but I thought there was a moment when Ellie said that that was in an upcoming meeting. They were going to start, they were going to relook at the master. And they just and met, I looked at their minutes and I didn't see okay. anything in there other than the fact that they didn't really have an ex-focus. That's why one of my questions on the survey was the rec, because that is an old survey. Those people have moved out of town. So yeah, I would like to kids. see what well, that is. And I just threw the 10 in as a placeholder. I just came but across can... an old rec, rec committee master plan and it kind of made me chuckle. Because yeah. it's like, oh yeah, I bet this is nothing like what they're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll email LA because but, I, mean, I, I know it as a placeholder. I know they've done a Next they've year. done a lot over there in the last three or four years, but and maybe there maybe it's time year. for a pause, but yep. What is the timeline for the next one so that we can start putting some appropriate money aside? Exactly. Um, yeah. So or asking the voters for extra for the well, next yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because so that was why that was my question on the survey. It was my number one question was we've got what is that? And I think that surveys my own opinion is that survey is too old to be referenced. Anyway. And they're getting limited space now that <clears throat> they've got the addition on the um uh, Skateboard park. Exactly. There's only so much room in That's that right. area now. That's right. And this is <clears throat> small stuff, but I see in the town hall insurance went up again. It did. And I actually like that's going up and up and up and up every well, year. Well, I will say this. This is what I so got. Then, Lisa, I just got this and I was working on it yesterday. Because I mean, yesterday. three years ago, we were at 6,000. Now we're at well, 12. And Have here's you... the deal this is what you get. So I went back through and the town hall was higher. So I ended up calculating my contribution to the town hall that I had been too low. But I started doing the math this afternoon again, because I was saying 70% for the town hall, 29% for the town office, 1% for public places. So I'm going back now because they send us this whole breakdown. So I did a quick version and that's what's in here, but I need to sit back yeah. and go through the whole it's pages of insurance information. That yeah, it just seems yeah. like that one's just it's doubled it is. in four years. Mm -hmm. But I think we but saw don't that with forget, the Arnold Block. It yeah, was you also were yeah, under covered. Yeah. You didn't have the correct coverage before gotcha. either. And you mm -hmm. had to choose at one point were you going to get replacement cost mm -hmm. or were you going to get the other valuation? And you guys agreed that no, you uh, weren't going to build a replica of this if heaven forbid it burns down. But um, so that change also, Chris, is less of an increase and more of a re or a proper allocation. But I'm just started working, going back through it again. And, and then another question I had here was, um, so we had increased some of the appropriation money uh, for appointed officials you last did year. Last year yeah. And then we were going to get some feedback, like, for instance, um, uh, like the, the help. Oh, but the yeah. health officer. Even though the health, health officer chose not to yep. take a pay, they were going to give us some information like how many oh, hours they're him. working and I so that we him. could build that into a budget going forward. Um, and then did Chuck we get any, good, any feedback in regards to the ones that we did adjust? Did it? Well, it, it made a couple people happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I will say that. So I can email Chuck Davis and I will also email the fire warden mm -hmm. and ask Gary um, how many, how it's worked out for them. And um, I mean, I was able to talk talk to Chuck um, a little while ago, and he was telling me that he was actually quite busy. He is quite busy. Um, we see him very frequently in the office. He was in the other day. He and I had a meeting um, last week, I think, or the week before. So quite busy. And he might yeah. need. Uh, oh, he he dropped off. He might need Paul back now. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, he might need Paul. Yeah. he has his Deputy assistant, Doe. which is his <laughs> daughter <laughs> Melanie, is his yeah. assistant. Um, but he yeah, he's is, quite busy. he's amazing and he does such great work that you're just so lucky to have him. So, so worth, um, worth the appropriation. Yeah. So I can email Chuck and Gary for um, approximate hours. So, and then again, like I said, I cut the Lister budget. So that's down 13.65%. Um, and... And I'm just assuming that you didn't have the White River Valley Ambulance one yet. You just no, it's threw... in there. Oh, well, I, I saw you had an increase, but I just figured you just. I what I had was I have their increase, but they do remember they're um on a calendar year, so mm -hmm. I take their number and then I increased mm -hmm. the second six months by I think I did 2%. one yeah I did two percent for the unknown six months. 
So I get a real number for half. They had a significant increase last year. Yeah. So I just estimate, I just threw 2% at it because I don't know what it will be. And then of course you have the 13,000, which is the new part for the phase two. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I'm also sure, I, well, I'm quite sure that you're not happy about my increase to the parks budget. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, I just have to mull it over. But, um, well, I think, I think the tough thing is it's not so much, I mean, I think, I think in order to get the quality of life that we want to see out of the town, I think yeah. it's right that we need to have that. It's just, it burns you when you look at how much it costs to have somebody on the payroll. It like, does. It, it like, is. it's not just like, oh, their salary is this. It's the, oh, the benefits, benefits are $50,000. Like, yeah. I mean, that's like a... It is. It's tough huge, between yeah. that and the retirement. And and yeah. remember last year, we had no applicants, zero applicants for lawn mowing. And don't forget that because of child labor laws, you know, to run a lawn mower, you'd think, you know, you would think a 16 year old could run a lawn mower, but you know, how are the states concerned? So, mm -hmm. but we had no applicants. So then I had to put it out to bid and I we yeah. had one bidder. So I, there you go. He's going to get what he gets. I put the other two sections back out to bid and then I'm paying 65 bucks an hour to put up a fence because I have no staff to do it. So um, it's tough. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, listen, I'm as Inter frugal as the next person. And but interesting that your uh, full-time person when you add all the 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 uh the costs to the town that are not salary for the individual that whole position comes to ninety six thousand dollars when you add in health insurance and all the rest so you're you're basically doubling whatever the salary is just exactly. for benefits yeah, so, you're right. It, it so, yeah, that's a piece that uh, most of our or many of our um, citizens probably don't fully appreciate how much when you hire a person is not just their salary, but you can their salary plus another salary just for benefits. Right. Exactly. You're right. No, I mean, and if you're trying to give a livable wage and be competitive. Plus, you're right, we have, you know, and honestly, sometimes that's the deal that sells it for me is the fact that we have such a good benefit package. I mean, I can't, you know, you can drive the bus right now, you got a CDL for 30 bucks an hour. I mean, I can't compete with that rate, but I do have better benefits. So if somebody sees the value in those, then, you know, then you're good. So, yeah, when I do the payables every other week and I see what, you know, just taking like one big pine tree down. In yeah. one of the cemeteries, and they didn't even have to cut it up and take it away. They just threw it over the embankment, and I saw that one bill. Yeah, that was, yeah, pretty yeah. hefty. And then all the lawn mowing and all the other little yeah little contract things. So the budget for for that person to hire full time year round is not that bad compared to the bills every other week that I see coming through yeah for I mean, subcontracting it, it's true I mean it, it's it's hard and I get it and it's a hit to the budget so I don't know we can double back to and go back through I can look closer at some of the issues um the what? road and I can also I did not have a chance to update all of my capital plan schedules the only one that was certainly updated was a capital equipment schedule um because we've done that with the equipment committee and obviously that's a big one there is they really need more money because after covid since sam and you saw it with just car prices or personal vehicles imagine what a town truck goes for now but you know that we had budgeted for x is now whoop, over here and i'm going you know at some point we're just when are you not going to be able to save enough and you're actually going to have to go to the voters and borrow to purchase something you know and the last time i looked at that was purchasing a grader and i was like oh my god i don't even dare to stand up in front of the voters and ask for this because it was such an outrageous amount of money mm -hmm. so what do, what do we feel when it comes down to the mm -hmm. um well, we call it the constable budget but mm -hmm. um so currently in the model that we show right now that we're doing the sixty-five thousand, which would be the contractor services for the eighteen to twenty-two 20. hours a yep. week, um, and then we do have 
some sign boards in there again mm -hmm. to purchase, which seems like we buy sign boards every year. We have been. We've been um, buying two to replace, then two new, and we were looking for two more to go all in. Yeah. Says, we could skip it this year. So he, he does not have a speed dolly, but we have yeah. one. So but if we you know if we, we have rent a it back to him. Yeah. <laughs> rent it back <laughs> to get my money. Well, like, I guess two front, like one, if we are gonna have an increased presence in town. Okay. Dave had to go. He if wasn't we, if we are gonna have an increased presence in town. Do we need to purchase any more of those speed signs? I would say no. You could. And then two, do we feel that the eighteen to twenty hours is? Do we want to? Do we want to? You know, tippy toe into the pool and see how things go, and then you know maybe next year we increase our services with them, or do we want to go up to them more closer to forty hours? You know, the thirty-two or forty-hour type service for a hundred thousand, which you know if you took the sign cart. You know, if you took that eight thousand dollars there, I mean, we're already at seventy three. I mean, you're only well. That's my thing is if we went to you're only one more one more cent on the tax rate to get your full, you know, get your kind of your full service, right? You could also go to seventy five thousand. I mean, look, he's not going to turn down any money. So if we went to him and said, look, sixty five hours is going to get us, you know, twenty hours, we could add another ten grand, and maybe we get to twenty five hours because he's right. We have been beneficiaries of click it or ticket and DUI mm -hmm. checkpoints, you see people yeah. and that is good money. I, I used to help oversee those plans and they are paying the officers plus mileage. You make money as a town off that. So we will benefit from that. Then the following year, if we sold the cruiser and then dump the capital, I don't have my town report with me, so I apologize. But if we dump the, we also have existing capital money in the capital cruiser fund. So if we sold the cruiser, if we took that, got rid of that capital money next year, if he works out at 75,000 and you want to go to a hundred or 115, you'll have some actual cash. So the value of that vehicle is maybe um, five, seven grand with all the equipment in it, plus the money you're sitting on. But um Right. Which, but then you got to be <laughs> careful because it gives you a quick relief, but then long term. Right. It's, it's, it's no different than the BRTS funds. Right. So. If anything, it might be better to just put it in funds somewhere and yeah, yeah you could, you could to transfer it to another or fund somewhere. or something. But there is some. But well, I mean, I I think you could easily. I think you could go to seventy five thousand in this budget, and and maybe get to. He'd probably do twenty five hours. I mean, the other thing too is obviously, you know, he's been in other towns and, and, and um, I'm assuming that obviously anything is better than what we have right now. Mm -hmm. And if we bring him on now to start, once we set an hourly rate and I can come into an agreement with him on a rate, we could supplement him all the way through with the remaining money that we have through July, July. and he rolls yep. in. So <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, it depends, you know. I mean, and that's the tricky thing is obviously we can put them on the payroll now yeah, and they can right. do some policing, but we can't really see how it goes because we have to put budget together, right? I mean, right. so it's like, you it's know, and what, what does, think it's a one -year I'm, I, I'm a big proponent of having them start on the sooner side. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious what that does to our current constables because or like- I've already had the conversation, oh, okay. they're, not they're with aware. Justin, but with Oscar. I told Oscar that we were moving toward, that we were definitely going to sign with the Windsor County Sheriff, okay. that we were going to bring them into supplement some hours, and that Oscar would be able to um, obviously exit. Um, that would be the expectation that he would be exiting to give all of his time to Royalton and that we could kind of phase him out okay. in a respectful way. And he was very- um, It sounds like Royalton's down an officer. They well. are. Yeah. He was so very- He's thankful. at least on board. Oh, you know, yeah. No, no, he that, is. Just understanding at least that piece of it before we make this decision. Yeah. So no, I already talked to him about okay. that. So um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, what do you think? We're sitting here. Do you, yeah. you know, do you, well. you obviously have a good head for the number because you have a- hours. You understand a business, so yeah. your budget. So, do you feel yeah. like seventy five trying to get us to twenty five hours, or you want to go? Thirty hour one Yeah, thirty two. Thirty two hours. hours. It was hundred. I think no, forty was one hundred fifteen. A hundred. Thirty two hours. Forty hours is one hundred twenty five thousand. Roughly. Yeah. yeah. But that clicker ticket really helps because, I mean, I used to see Royalton police, mm -hmm. you know, either Oscar or one of the other folks in yeah. the Royalton cruiser popping people left and right yeah. when they're when they're in town, like right by the school yeah. in the middle of the summer. 
I saw four cars get pulled over within 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. The other thing is too, is, is I could say without naming names is there's, I am expecting an additional $40,000 um, at least possibly in appropriations that people may be passing petitions for. So I don't even have that addressed in this budget, but we may be looking at an additional $40,000 mm -hmm. into this budget. That's, that's not here right now. This is draft one. And I just, just kind of heard about that. So yeah. yeah. And the, the way that, so that could happen is either they come to the select board and the select board agrees or the select board disagrees and makes them petition and then stand up in front of the voters and, I, I have never seen anybody be denied in front of the voters when they're making a play. So when they're making a pitch for money, because everybody is a worthwhile organization, you know, absolutely. So they could make a pitch directly to the voters. And then our budget here that we're scrutinizing every nickel to is all of a sudden $40,000 bigger. And next year we're going, okay, well now we're supporting this and we're supporting that and we're going to lose our $50,000. So what happens is, it's unfair to us in the sense that now we have to start, I'm going to may have to cut a position that I want because I need to make room for an appropriation that I guarantee you the voters are going to give, not that they're not worthy because they are, but then if I'm losing 50,000 in revenue, you know, I'm, you know, it's hard. Uh huh? I, you know, I, I don't know what they're going to do right now. So I'll know next week. But still, so it's another possible hit to the budget or an add on to the budget that I can't manage yeah. and that yeah. you can't either, because if it goes to the voters and they voted in, then it's next year. We're looking at a budget that's $40,000 bigger Plus. that we've had nothing to do with. And, and you know, and that's and I'm a challenge. At, and I'm looking at cutting a position that I want, not because I can't truly afford it, but because we're giving money away to that it's you know and then again i don't mean that in a disrespectful way it's just frustrating because i'm charged with keeping the wheels on the bus and and i'm inherently no, but it, 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 it's but a valid not... point because it's you know when people are put in a room with others if they if they agree upon it or not agree upon it very seldom does anybody want to speak out against yeah. things like that and, and it becomes tricky because your taxes go up and when your taxes go up there's typically less and less people or more and more people that get burdened with those taxes mm -hmm. that then have to a type of service that they're used to having they may not have that anymore and then on the flip side of that then then there's human services that we provide in town that then go up and up and up because you know when you can't provide it at home you have to get it somewhere else and then you know it's just kind of a vicious circle that you keep chasing it is of, you know your taxes go up and you can't provide that service and you know, now they're, you know, getting the service from somebody else that we're funding. Yeah. So then that goes up, you know, it's just kind yeah. of, you're going around and around and, and, and nobody at town meeting day is going to stand up and say they're against the food shelf or they're against, you know, because the they want to be crucified, but or at the same the time, library, yeah. they're hoping that three months down the road that when they go, you know, to write out their tax check that everything's gonna be great but then they find out it's 300 dollars more and, and they're like "Ooh, what yeah yeah what happened what do i not buy this yeah. month and it's very month? difficult you know but, I, I would like you know if you're in the town office collecting and you have a, a couple that's really struggling that you know is in a in a retirement situation it's 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 hard it's hard and um to to do that and and whether or not they're going to get a bigger prebate if you are paying the full boat because you don't qualify for a prebate then you're paying your tax, but your tax is going to go up because now you're funding portion of a prebate. So, because the state's going to give more money and it's going to, it's just kind of this crazy pool. And, and I'm not saying that everybody isn't worthy. They are. But if the town is going to become a bigger and bigger and bigger social service agency, then, you know, we need to find donors. <laughs> you know, like well, I, the problem is, is it's, it's such a vicious yeah, circle because the more is. services you add, then the more overhead you need to manage those services, right? And 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 you just keep yeah. building it. It goes around and around and around in a circle until uh, eventually nobody can afford anything. You know, you need right? to think about so I I, un I understand I understand what you're saying. Uh and you're repeating yourselves. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. it, uh I do want to uh request that you
He muted himself. Muted yourself. Gene, you just died out. I just, okay, my re I respectfully request that you take a look at the animal uh, animal control line uh, before next week. Uh, if we go with uh, what's that going to cost us if we go with uh, uh, Windsor County, because that will not be. Oh, Lindley just pointed out you missed that part because you had another meeting prior to this. That's included oh, okay. in the 65,000. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Well, assuming it doesn't all of a sudden be become yeah, just an animal yeah. control yeah. issue. All right, know. exactly. Oh, I never said that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we got um, it on tape. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. when I redo the budget, do you want me December to. 11. So, I'm going to have to double back and go through some numbers. Yeah. Do you want me to. What do you want to do for the constable? Do you want me to put it at 75, 80, 100? Do you want me to go right to 100 just so you can see what it looks like next week? What? the huh 80, 80, 80. 80. he's not going to turn down a nickel so i mean he's saying he's a salesman so you can dicker yeah well i mean i think it doesn't hurt us to see some hours gets more. us 100 so and if he's right. saying 65 gets us 20 if we get to 80 i, I don't think it hurts us to see a version of the budget with a slightly higher amount no, you know whether not. that's 75 80 you know but okay. just just to visualize it because i think at least then we can Oh. have that as part of the conversation and I'd, I'd be fine with dropping the additional solar signs for this year okay yeah um and i'll i'll email ryan and a uh, palmer sheriff palmer excuse me no disrespect and um ask him what we could get for eighty thousand, and i'll remove the signs and i will go back through i'll email ellie and obviously i gotta go i'm still working through my insurance numbers and i'll go back through um maybe you could Give me your thoughts, Chris, on the road budget. It's certainly up your alley. And then um three trillion. I like yeah. Yeah. And then um, I can come back to you with a just more fine tuned budget. And I and I know over the course of I don't know now. Maybe it's seven years ago. I don't know. What close to when I started here. We, we were trying to get to a more of a bell curve budget. Because we, you know, the town for the most part used to be, you know, oh. fun, fun at a very low level. And then we need something that would spike and then it would come down and spike and come down. And we were trying to get more of a bell curve. And I, this was back when Carl was on. And we had kind of looked at a trajectory of the services that individuals in the town had said that they wanted. And the curve was kind of more of like a two to three cent increase a year you know kind of was the of course inflation was only like 0.6 percent at that time um so i think anytime that we can kind of be in that area of like right now the way it is right now we're 2.4 cents so you know with some of these additions we're probably in the three and a half to four cent increase you know which is kind of in line with that and then i guess if you add in inflation it's you know um, it's not unreasonable, right? I, I think, um, obviously everybody would like to have their budget as least expensive as possible, yeah. but. And it's uh, hard too to, you know, you can only come up with so many non-tax, you know, revenue. And there are just certain things we can't control. How many people are going to register their dog? How many land right. records? How many houses are going to sell? You know, that sort of stuff. But, you know, unless we're going to put up a toll booth on you know, jerk camp jerk yeah. campra. We should yeah. do it on yeah. campra. Oh, my God, we'd make a mint. Okay, well, so if they slow down enough under Mach thirty to get a freaking buck into the slot. We'd be like, right yeah, exactly. Okay, so we got a week to mull through that. So, um, the lister. I'm assuming that since you didn't balk on that, you're okay with the proposed plan of removing yeah. the lister's office. The lister's putting that'll go on the warning, go in front of the voters, so we can make that pitch. Okay. So yeah, I think we're just at the point where it just is what it is. It's kind of like us phasing out the constable, like it's just. The, yeah. the times have changed. It is. Yep. It is. And you've had a, guess, some history with your listers up. So I think just bringing somebody in, you know, outside. So 
Yeah. All right. It would maybe benefit all parties to have yeah. a little bit of a disconnect. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. All right. Anything left on town on uh, town manager report and stuff? Just wanted to remind people that um the progress is at the standstill at the skate park. So there is the fencing has been reestablished, bigger signs are up now. So <clears throat> nobody should be on the skate park or in that area. It's it's all fenced off. It's it's obviously a tripping hazard. And what people don't realize is if you are a skateboard fan, then you should know that if you're walking through the mud and walking on the park, you are yourself ruining your own park because stones and mud and grit on your shoes on that skate park are going to damage the ceiling, the surface that we just put on it. So we're respectfully asking people to just leave it alone. And the rec area will do a grand uh, opening in the spring. Once we can finish the sidewalk, then it finishes off our land water conservation grant requirements and they can do a big, you know, grand opening and do something really nice. Are there any signs? I saw the fencing that's up, like, but are there any signs that sort of explain that to like, here's the reason to stay off of this? Well, I did ask Ellie to put up some signs and they were going to be doing a push on Front Porch Forum and Facebook. There's only okay. so much that people are going right. to read. I mean, you know, if, yeah, there, I think if there's signs right yeah. in front of you, you know, a kid that might not be thinking about it who just wants to jump the fence because it's yeah. fun might read it and go, oh yeah, actually yeah. I care about. Yeah, I asked Ellie to put up some signs. We didn't really discuss, you know, exact wording, but they had agreed okay. to do sort yeah. of an educational Great. campaign about it. So um Violators. so that's good and um at least just sitting there with a shotgun our, <laughs> our road work is almost done i think we have a little spot left on camp you know finley bridge road but i got a culvert in on saturday on Purim. so we obviously have the delay on camp brook road but i believe that our fema work is really wrapping up so i'd like i said i think the only project i have left is a little bit of work on finley and you're done right yep. congrats that's yeah, done. yeah. Doing a couple wow. pictures of and yeah. some yeah no yeah, that's some good find a way to get up the range and there what will you do with all this free time <laughs> it's coach that's basketball sleep. Yeah. Yeah. so i just want to remind you off this open for you yeah. exactly you're going to remind you uh that or do you still need to meet at 6 30 on monday we were changing because I, I have a game until six so I mean, okay or, or just start the meeting without me if somebody wants to sub in start the meeting and i'll be there when i'm done I mean, I think if it's mostly budget discussions, it makes sense for you to like to, that we just started a little late. Okay. If that's the the bulk of our meeting, oh, I'm hoping yeah. so. I, I don't do six thirty on yeah, the 18th. Do Are yeah, you good with that, Gene? Six thirty anyway. on the 18th. Yep. Yeah. He's saying just G and shaking so, yeah. your head. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That or Christmas. Huh? Yeah. See that or Christmas. We there you go. That's right. right. While we're at it. Whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm good. Sounds good. Four minutes. Anything else? Select board. Select board meeting minutes from the 27th. Move to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. There was kind of some other stuff in here. Uh, Gene had asked me to put in the packet, so that's in here. The um, EIC committee. The EIC committee had minutes in here. The Solid Waste Alliance had minutes in here. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's a kind of a, I think that was about it. Yep. That's it. Trees. All right, anything else to come before the board? I know it's a little bit later meeting, of course, usually during budget season, they run later, but we just did the whole, pretty much the whole budget run yeah. through where normally we just run through like half a dozen departments at a time. So yeah, it's nicer to look at it one as much as yeah. it's more difficult to put together. It's still nice to run. Well, it's like it. at the school that I was been doing, they, they give you like little pieces. They're like, oh, we're going to add this. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I mean, wait, until we see the whole number, like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah throw it in there. Right. Sounds good. Exactly. So. Kind of works out. All right. So, uh, I'll and then what are we going to uh, set up for our date for um, the budget? Public informational? Yeah. It has to be the Monday prior to town meeting. Okay. But we usually do two and we usually do them at so our both regular February meetings. We'll probably do it. Yeah. We usually okay. do them at our regular February right. meetings anyways, but um, it has to be the Monday prior to town meeting. So I, I, I haven't got to look at a February calendar. I assume that'll be the second, fourth, but if not, we'll have to juggle it yeah. there. Okay. All right. 
Sounds good. Uh, move just... to adjourn. Second. Okay, so evening, Lindley but... and Denise move to adjourn, Julie. All right, thank you.